<laughs> How are you, man? Not too bad. How about yourself? I'm good. Long time no see. Excellent. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, I don't think I've seen you since you moved to uh, Colorado. I know, man. It's been too long. Dude, yeah. I had to wear this jacket because this is your old jacket. Dude. It is. Yeah. And I <laughs> yeah, and I recognized it. I was like, wait. I'm like, yeah. I remember that. Yes, sir. Like 20 <laughs> years ago, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm still taking care of it. I love uh, good clothing that lasts a long time, and uh, this is it, man. So there you go. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't have uh, I don't have one of those anymore. Now I have a um, uh, oh god, what is it? It's a Dickie's barn coat. Oh, nice. Uh, so I uh, I look like I have a. Uh, um, a, a strange denim suit on when, <laughs> when I, when I, when I go out for the winter, <laughs> but, uh, it keeps me warm. So but you look durable. <laughs> very, yeah. Very durable. Like, Dude, uh, I have you a, know, yeah, same. I have a Carhartt jacket. It's all beat up, but I love it. It's so comfortable, man. It's like, yeah, yeah. those jackets, it's going to last like a couple days yeah. like this one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're never gonna have. It's one of those things you're never gonna have to replace or anything like that. So, no, <laughs> we're, no. but I'm also I'm also and you're in this uh, area too where we're getting to the uh, we're getting into that age where we're like kind of like where our dads were where we're like, well, you know, you hear something or see something, and you're like, fuck you, I have jeans older than you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you right. Know? I have so. socks older than you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no exactly. Kidding. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's it's totally that that type uh, of situation at this point. So I know, I know. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm forty. I just turned forty six. How old are you? Forty three or something? I, I'm forty three. I'll be forty four in May. Dude, how does this happen? Yeah, y you know, it's just the churning of time, <laughs> <laughs> and it's and so it's, weird. It's, it's sometimes it's sometimes good, but not always kind. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I hear you. Well, uh, we go back yeah, what like twenty six years. Uh, yeah, I think I actually, I think I met you. I think we met when I was like probably sixteen, maybe seventeen. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because I went to school with uh, your sister and her friend. Yep. And then she kind of introduced us all. Yep. Um, uh, and then. We all started hanging out. So, yeah, yeah, it's been like, I mean, yeah, I would say like almost 30, almost 30 years. Yeah. Like it's, it's a long, I was, I was thinking about it today uh, when I had a minute, which put me off a half hour. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> like I had a, I had a, I had a big day, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, <laughs> just tattoo wise and stuff like it was, it was a lot to I saw some take pictures. In. It looks like you did a big working on a big back piece today. Yeah, I outlined yeah. a back piece. That's like, awesome. and yeah, it was like two hours of like two hours one shot. But I've been working wow. on the same thing for like three days. Oh, you know, wow. like just drawing it and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so yeah, so anyway, uh, but yeah, my day was kind of all over the place today. So. <laughs> Well, that's all right, dude. Thanks for uh, joining me. This is awesome. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for so, having me. Oh, dude, of course. I was looking forward to this for ever since we set it up a week ago. Um, sure. Yeah, me too. I was trying to remember. Do you remember the first time we met officially? Um, you know, I think we met for the very first time. Uh, I think we met at, you had an, did you have an apartment on Jackson Street? in Janesville I had one on Cherry Street that's the one the white yeah. the big white the big white house yeah no but we met before that because okay so maybe before, we did meet before that we definitely met before that so I dug into the vaults today man I went, yeah. I went deep into the vaults I was looking through old pictures and all kinds of stuff and uh so this is my first memory of you and I'm not sure if this was the first time we met but you had blue hair yep <laughs> and hickeys on your neck <laughs> yep <laughs> both sound completely correct <laughs> that was my uh, first recollection of you and I, I couldn't remember if we met before that we did okay. uh we we actually did know each other a bit before that uh okay. 
we might not have been hanging out much at that point. Yeah. But um, okay, uh, so I think the apartment that you probably remember my my first apartment when hanging out with all you guys was on Clark Street. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you kind of had like I think you guys had like a little like you couldn't it wasn't like a balcony but it was like a roof you could walk yep. out onto and totally. stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I remember hanging out with uh, hanging out with all you guys over yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah, um, uh, uh, because I think, um, I think that started up like during the summer, maybe or something like that of that yeah. year. Sounds right. Um, so yeah, that was that about when been... I met Brian and I met you shortly after that. He introduced me to you, I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I uh, mm. met you and Cam Toon and, um, Actually, I think we I met Ben Kubley there. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I know Ben Kubley did like a front flip off of the top of that roof to get away from some uh, <laughs> some poorly cops. timed, yeah, some poorly <laughs> poorly timed visitors. So, <laughs> I remember he took a really long walk. Oh, so, <laughs> he took a really long walk away from his motorcycle. So. <laughs> I remember so, somebody yeah. running from cops out the back door of that place and jumping over fences and like ripping their pants and running yeah. through dogs and that might have been brian probably like, yeah probably was like i don't know i'm like always like very sedentary where i'm just like yeah well whatever like <laughs> i'm just gonna slide over here and like just kind of watch yeah that's true you always were that guy <laughs> it was like i'm gonna like i'm just gonna like i'm gonna look and just see just how how bad will it get? You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my god. Because so, like a lot of I mean, one of the great things I think about uh I don't know, I think like when I didn't have blue hair or weird colored hair or anything like that, but um like uh looking older than I was. Yeah was a good thing oh yeah uh, and so it was like oh well fuck they might not fuck with me yeah uh, totally <laughs> so and a lot of times they didn't yeah. you know it was like yeah. oh yeah okay well you know fuck him whatever oh <laughs> he's, yeah he, he's not giving us any shit so fuck it whatever yeah he's not getting up and running he's not going anywhere no, no he just lit a cigarette yeah, <laughs> you totally. know, back, in, back, back in the back in it's like he just lit a cigarette and he might be watching a movie. We don't totally. know. Totally, yeah. uh, you know. So <laughs> that was you, totally. If the cops yeah, showed yeah. up, you would yeah do exactly yeah, that. Just, just light just a like, cigarette. Hey, how's it going? Like, How you doing? You know, <laughs> it's like I don't know. I think I learned really early on. Uh, I learned really early on uh, living in Tennessee that uh, before I ever moved up here, because my father. Uh, living with him down there um, and dealing in the business that he was in or one of the businesses he was in was that um, making a stink with the police uh, wasn't getting anywhere. You know, it was like, you might have not the best idea yeah fuck off with that you know <laughs> like, <laughs> give them your pay give them your license and just fucking be honest yeah, you know <laughs> that was that was the only thing you could do so because <laughs> like if they got you they got you yeah you know like that's it <laughs> i remember all of us running from cops at some point or another but i don't ever remember you running from cops so yeah i totally nah. like Mm -mm. but no, you were I mean, always I mean, smarter I mean, than I, us like you came I, from tennessee <laughs> with this 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 different wisdom like you were a couple years ahead of us in in terms of wisdom <laughs> we were just like young and stupid we had like i don't know why i you know honestly like for all the times i was called a dumbass growing up i do not know how that worked out <laughs> but uh <laughs> um i definitely learned how to evade things yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's no no, no question about that uh, uh but i mean that was one of the things that was like a thing growing up down there was the fact that like you had to like um you had to get proper at uh doing nefarious things if you wanted to do those things right. and not have everybody and their fucking brother find out yeah and like if you came you know it's like my dad was always like don't lie to me if i catch you but if i don't catch you it's like okay oh, yeah. yeah exactly so it was like all right well i'm gonna get really good at not being caught yeah, totally. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, some uh, so you know sometimes better than others but uh um but yeah so you just get really good at not being caught i think uh, <laughs> uh, I because it. it was a really 
very disciplined household that I came from. Uh, and I think I remember yours kind of being that way too. Oh, yeah. Like that was one of the things that we talked about a lot was the fact that like we both came up with like pretty stern disciplinarian, yeah. you know, parents. Yeah. Uh, and probably for, for the better, uh, <laughs> quite frankly, considering my situation and like, uh, just kind of all of the places that I've been. So, uh, well, let's um, jump into that. It definitely, like, it helped. Because it's been so long for me, man. And I, I've heard the stories, but like what I remember when I first met you was you came up from Tennessee and, uh, you know, you had this sort of a past. And if I remember right, yep. you hated your dad <laughs> or, or yes, disliked your dad, at least at the time. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I had to, I had to sue him for my own custody to leave Tennessee oh, and wow. move up here with my mother and my I mean, stepfather. I remember parts so, of that. Okay. So yeah. But yeah. I mean, tell yeah, me, it tell turned me about into that. like, like how did John Bass start uh, in Tennessee? Uh, I was just another kid. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I grew, I was kind of raised, uh, I was raised mostly by my mother and my grandparents on her side, my her parents, uh, and most of her family. Um, I think most of my dad's, my my actual dad's family has been dead since I was born or before. Um, there's not okay. many, not many of them at all left. My dad's gone now, actually, as well. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, uh, um, I was a skater kid punk you know like uh i got into skateboarding i got my first skateboard probably when i was like six or seven mm, okay. and skateboarded really heavily up until my like teens 15 16 something like that and subsequently also got into like you know punk rock and like yeah. just that whole scene yeah. uh you know like and Oddly enough, I was like one of the better kids. I figured out a lot of stuff about it and learned a lot of stuff and things like that. But uh, I was like <clears throat> not so much one of the vandals uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that so many of uh, the people that I hung around with could be on occasion. Uh, so um, because I knew I'd get my ass beat uh by my father <laughs> uh, i i get my ass beat probably wind up writing an essay to whoever's property i damaged uh and also cleaning it in all of my free time uh so uh i avoided shit like that <laughs> uh, no not worth it at all at all uh and i mean it happened a few times which is why i know the outcome yeah. Yeah. but uh but yeah um so yeah like uh really that was kind of that was kind of it and then my mother um, she remarried uh, who my, to my stepdad, who's a great guy. Um, I pretty much consider him my dad at this point. Um, she and my sister moved to Wisconsin. Uh, I was in high school by this point and didn't want to be uprooted um, in the middle of high school. And sure. uh, then I moved in, you know, that whole thing went smooth. And uh, uh I wound up coming up here after, of course, suing my father uh, while I was living with him, uh, which go? went uh, not real well. Uh, <laughs> I can only imagine. A, a fart in church uh, comes to mind <laughs> when, when I'm talking about that. Uh, it got real scary. Uh, like the day that the whole court thing went down uh i had gone to stay with my grandmother in another town we lived in suburbs of nashville what are now suburbs of nashville i should say but um so i went to stay with my grandmother because my mother was in town she was staying there the night before the court date and um i tried to leave my dad's house with um a lot of the more the few valuable things that i had um and no matter what the outcome because i didn't know I wasn't sure whether the judge was going to be like, oh, you can go or no, you have to For go sure. back. Yeah. Um, and so you don't know what, so, you know, you don't know shit really because you're 16. Yeah. Um, but um, anyway, he was like, no, you can't, you can't do that. Uh, you're not taking any of that. Like that's here. I bought that. And I was like, all right, whatever. And so I took off anyway. And uh, that, um, that next day we got up, went to court 
and all of like the dirtiest laundry of the whole household came out really um and just like shit hit the fucking fan i wound up hanging out with the judge for a half hour in his fucking chambers uh and he knew that i smoked cigarettes at that time and he was like he lit up a cigar and he was like, I smoke too, so feel free. Yeah. And so we just sat there and smoked. And I told him, like, what kind of shit show I was living in uh, with my father and my step family. And he was like, all right, then. He's like, well, he's like, let's have another smoke. <laughs> and then we'll go out there. And he's like, you know, you're going to be free to go to Wisconsin. And he's like, sir, are you ready to go fast? And I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, good. Because I don't think your dad's going to like this at all. Mm. And he didn't. Uh, he actually like lost his shit coming out of the courthouse, spat on us. And then when, by the time I got my uncle involved to take me down to get my shit, um, he was sitting on the front porch with a loaded pistol. <laughs> and my shit was piled in the front yard. And he was just letting his Doberman piss on it. Uh, yeah so it's pretty gnarly <laughs> so anyway and then i was here <laughs> so what like what brought you to the point where things got that ugly i mean was your dad abusive or uh what was going on at home i mean you don't have uh, to get super he, deep into it if you don't want to no nah, he wasn't i mean he wasn't like uh i mean he, he had threatened me a few times for me saying certain things about my stepmother Okay. Um, and she was not the greatest person, but you know what? Like you brought a child, you brought this kid into your house with two other teenagers. Um, and like he governed me and she governed my stepbrother and my stepsister. And so everything was completely different for mm -hmm. everybody in the house. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, yeah, I mean, as far as the whole thing went, it was just like, well, you know, he would get to be, he would be very intimidating mentally uh, and with his speech and stuff like that. Um, but uh, really, like, one of the biggest things was the fact that, like, uh, at one point, I had a part-time job at one of the last, uh, what I found out was one of the last Tiki restaurant supper clubs in the country located down in Smyrna, Tennessee. And so, um, I had a great time working with those people and at that place. Um, but, uh, like I, I was told that I shouldn't wash my own clothes at home because she would take care of that. And so my work clothes just kept sitting and sitting and sitting and my school clothes kept sitting and sitting and everybody else had clean clothes and I didn't have clean clothes. And I was like, what the fuck? When are my clothes going to get washed? And it was like, don't bother with that. Like, your clothes will be clean. Don't worry about it. And so finally, uh, because my grandmother lived not too far away, I was like, fuck it. I'm packing my shit up and I'm taking it all to my grandmother's house. And I'm going to cut her yard for her so she'll wash my clothes. Yeah. And so um, that's what I did. And when I brought all my clothes home, I it was ill-timed because I came home like for dinner and I had a duffel bag full of clean shit and my stepmother behind the scenes like tore into my dad and like told him that I was making her feel useless hmm. because I had gone and had my clothing washed. And I was like, well, is it actually supposed to be the opposite? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you had other shit to do. So I got my clothes washed right, and, right. And, and mowed along. So, uh, yeah, that was like when I figured out that I was like getting in trouble for washing clothes somewhere other than uh, at that house. I was like, this is fucked, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like this is this is not changing. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, it was a it was a weird, wild couple of years there with uh with that crew of folks wow yeah <laughs> i mean did you ever get in trouble for washing your clothes <laughs> uh, i got in trouble for some things but i don't think i ever got in trouble for that one <laughs> no uh -uh. it'd be like if it, it's like you know it's like if i like would you get in trouble like i was like i didn't get in trouble for cleaning the house yeah you know yeah. and i did that and right. she usually does that Right. So wow. what the fuck? <laughs> I wow. ain't in trouble for mowing the lawn. <laughs> uh, 
So then you came to Wisconsin and I did. that's when I met you. Yep. And, um, so, um, what are your memories from that? I mean, you, you started going to school at Milton, uh, high school. It was a, a new school. You were like, did you feel like you were kind of the odd man at school since you're from a different state? And yeah, it was bizarre. Yeah. I went from a school of like, I came up from a school of like, probably like 2000 kids or something like that to like a school of like 700 kids. I think yeah. there was like less than seven. It was like, it's a farm school, yep. not anymore probably, but it was at that time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, there was like a small contingent of like kind of like minded people there, but you really had to seek them out. For sure. Um, but yeah, it was a very big culture shock and just like having people come up to you and they just just them asking you to talk because of the southern accent oh. uh you know <laughs> they would come up and they would be like will you just talk <laughs> i was like i about what <laughs> like we just want to hear your voice <laughs> like it's so different than anything that we're used to hearing and right? you know and you were like uh yeah i guess <laughs> so uh so yeah it was a, it was a it was different uh and you know everything was like I mean, I think almost every high school is like, it's like, okay, very sports forward. And yep. like, it's like join all these groups and stuff like that. But it was like, it was like amplified. I mean, that's coming from the South and it was like, it seemed amplified like times 10 totally. coming into Milton high school. Yeah. Uh, it was a, it was a strange bird to me and just <laughs> as I was to it. Yeah. You know? yeah so <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Did you ever feel like you found a place to fit in or um, were you always just kind of on the outside looking in or? You know, I kind of like figured out to fit in everywhere, yeah. uh, you know, to a certain extent. Uh, yeah. That was one of the better things I think about high school was the fact that like I just kind of figured out a way to like be friends with a lot of different people. Um, and it, you know, I don't know. I think it worked out. I think it worked out real well, especially like after school, mm. um, you know, after I was gone. Um, but yeah, I just kind of figured out, you know, I kind of figured out how to move the path of less resistance, mm -hmm. you know, through the social circles and stuff like that always seemed to be, uh, a good thing. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the, I guess the path that I took most of the time was because, you know, I was like, well, you know, I had been through all this shit. I was going to counseling. Um, and I really just didn't need a hard time with shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, I'd already chosen this one very resistant path. Uh, <laughs> and, and like, I was, I kind of needed to cool my fucking jets, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, don't, like, you know, it's like, there's a time to shine and there's a time to fucking lay low. <laughs> it's just like, all right, let's get the fuck, let's get down here again. <laughs> and yeah. Just like kind of chill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, that was my thought process. I think on the whole thing really, That's true. Um, but it was, a, I mean, it was a like from the time I was there, uh, really, for the most part, it was a really good experience, and I met a lot of really, you know, really nice people and stuff like that. Looking back on it, uh, nice. uh, I don't have a lot of like, I don't want to go to reunions, yeah, do shit like that. Uh, it yeah. wasn't that. It wasn't that big a wasn't part. That good. <laughs> no, it wasn't that good. You know, like I don't need to revisit it. Uh, you know, like I don't go back to my fucking like supper club job at the tiki joint either. It's still there, uh, and I drove by it five years ago when I went to visit people in Tennessee. But I don't need to go hang out and like wash a dish or anything. Uh, so. <laughs> so yeah, overall it was a good time. And you're still in Madison now, right? I'm in Madison, Wisconsin, and have been, yeah, for, uh, I've Long been, time. yeah, I've been tattooing here in Madison for what will be, I think, 21 years in October. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, um, yeah, I made a... I made a real poor choice a long time ago and I've ridden it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking with that. I'm sticking to it, man. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> no, man, you found something that you're really genuinely good at. And uh, so I think you should stick with it in, in some, yeah. some capacity. But yeah, I uh, I joke about I joke about that all the time. Uh, a lot of it is for people that ask me about uh, getting into tattooing or newer tattooers. And I'm just like, oh, well, you ruined your life already. So <laughs> I guess fucking suck it up and roll. Just dive in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, look at all you could have. <laughs> yeah, right? You know? <laughs> like, uh, crippling depression and anxiety, possibly a substance abuse problem, <laughs> sleepless nights, thinking about what you're going to put on somebody permanently. <laughs> Sign up. <laughs> Who wouldn't want that? What exactly. a treat. <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't, like, I think you had to have, like, a dual mind thing going on in order to, like, really, like, really like do it uh <laughs> from what i can figure out dude you should hold that. seminars for like new tattoo people and you <laughs> right. can present, present them with that <laughs> right yeah <laughs> do you want anxiety and depression yeah <laughs> Right. You get that. Well, this one, this one part of your brain won't. Yeah. <laughs> like this one specific part won't accept any of that. <laughs> so, uh, so you can really do whatever the fuck you want, <laughs> but you can't. Uh, <laughs> it depends on the day and the time and all that good stuff. So, uh, so yeah, it's been a tattooing has been a real wild ride, man. Uh, uh, I, right. I really kind of, I never in my life thought that I would be involved in. Uh, something like this uh but um i have always been a person i think that chases the rabbit down the rabbit hole yeah. and um uh, i i found a rabbit hole that i can't come out of and the chambers just keep progressing you know it's just it just keeps expanding uh you know so it's uh it's good. It keeps my mind busy. Uh, it keeps my mind and my hands busy and stuff, totally. stuff like that. And uh, so, yeah, it's been it's been a really good it's been a really good thing to me. Um, the people are very interesting. Uh, you know, like it's a that's a wild situation all on its own too. <laughs> I, bet. I bet I'm sure you got some stories, and I want to get into all of them, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's but, uh, I've seen some shit. <laughs> <laughs> so like how did you get into tattooing because i remember we were always good friends for for years and years and if i remember right you kind of disappeared for like a year or two and then like the next time i saw you 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 know all of a sudden you had a lot of tattoos and you were hanging around yeah. with a lot of tattoo guys and and shortly after that you were you were doing your own work so, and you know that's yeah. just me on the outside and and, uh, you know, but how did it all go and how did it all start for you? Well, I vanished. Uh, I vanished because I got uh, that wild ass traveling job with that engineering company. Oh, out yeah. of Danville. That's right. And so I was on the road all the time. Okay. Uh, like I went from being able to hang out with all you guys and party constantly yeah. to working my ass off in weird different cities pretty much all over the country for long periods of time sometimes. And so um, I got bored and uh, <laughs> I was drawing a lot, making, I was buying tattoo magazines. Like I had a whole satchel full of tattoo magazines uh, that I traveled with. I had a whole sketchbook and I had all this stuff. And uh, I started finally getting tattooed in New York City. Um, I got my first tattoo in New York City at New York Adorned and uh, like basically just like tripped over myself trying to get into another shop to get a tattoo, the next really? tattoo. I think That's I got crazy. my next, I think I got my next tattoo after my first one, like three days later. Wow. Um, yeah, it was insane uh, well, to look back at it. It's funny because, uh, you know, we mentioned uh, a couple days ago over text that you were with me when I got my, it was like my second tattoo, I think, at Diamond Tattoo yeah, in Janesville. The Alpha, the Alpha Omega. Yeah. Was it a yin, yin Yang? It was a, it was a Yin Yang, and it's uh, the, um, the symbol for Bruce Lee's martial art, Jeet Kune Do. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yep. uh, you were with me for that. Yep. And uh, you were just kind of hanging out, looking at the tattoos and stuff there, and... and yep. It was shortly after that that all of a sudden you just dove headlong into this thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like, he, uh, like most any other old 
tattoo artist at the because he had some age on him at that time. Yep. Uh, like any other tattoo artist, when I asked questions to him, and I wound up getting tattooed by him as well. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I got a tattoo uh, on the back of my arm from him. But um, anyway, uh, and I tried to talk to him again, like while I was in there getting that tattoo, and that guy would not come off any information. Uh. Like basically, like if you asked him something, shut the fuck up. <laughs> look forward i'm doing my work wow. that was it and so and like rightfully so i get it now uh i totally understand it well um, i got kind of a funny story about him so he did that one on my back that you were there with me for and then yep. i had been out in the sun a lot for a handful of years and it got sun damaged and it's just looks sure. like a messed up oatmeal cookie now like it yeah. just, oh, you course. know yeah and uh and he was doing another one in the back of my arm years later and, he, and i think i might have been wearing a tank top or something and he saw the one that he did on my back and he goes boy, that's a pretty messed up looking tattoo on your back. Who did that one? <laughs> I go, well, you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. That was you, buddy. <laughs> that free touch up come after that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that was all you, my friend. <laughs> that's when you're like sitting in the tattoo chair and like this, like you get like cold, but you got this hot drip of sweat coming down that side of your face out of your temple and you're just like mm, yeah <laughs> like i just shit and step back in it <laughs> like, straight up <laughs> I'm like oh fuck I'm like, hey do you have any tattoos yeah you did them all <laughs> <laughs> cool uh so yeah uh, yeah so ted like ted was an interesting character uh especially the way he worked uh like looking back on it i was thinking about that the other day i was like man looking back on it like that guy really worked in a weird way because he was like appointment only you know right. for like for everything right. with, especially like in janesville yeah. at that time like you would have never like you can barely get away with that shit now during a pandemic really uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it was like wow it's like mr cutting edge um but uh <laughs> He pulled it off, man. I mean, he had people leaving their job at like 11 in the morning. Yeah. Come in, get their tattoo on a Tuesday. And it worked for him. So, um, so yeah. But, uh, yeah, tattooing, uh, tattooing in the beginning was very, very wild. And I've got a lot of bad tattoos and stuff like that as well from, like, just going, like, not researching shops properly. Don't we um, all. <laughs> and, yeah. So, it's like. You know, I don't have I don't have a single cover up on me. Really? Like I'm not getting yeah, I'm not yeah, getting man. shit covered, man. Oh, like, yeah, same it. here. I don't have any cover ups. It's like <laughs> I own oh, it. that was a time in my life. This <laughs> yeah, is just, exactly. like this body is just a journal, man. <laughs> exactly. It's like somebody was like, Are you ever gonna get that tribal covered up? And I'm like, fuck no. It's like already <laughs> it's like coming back around now. Like <laughs> <laughs> there's like a whole new there's like a whole new generation of dads that are gonna have a midlife crisis that I'm gonna start dropping armbands on players. Right. I gotta rep that shit. <laughs> it's a calling uh, card. <laughs> so, uh, well, yeah, you do great work. I mean, some of my I mean, probably my very best tattoos came from you. You've done like appreciate three it, or, or four of mine, and I've always yeah. uh, you've always done good work. But I'm guessing it wasn't always that way. I'm guessing your first tattoos were probably a little sketch. Oh, um, uh, dude, I wound up getting, I wound up having the main person that I was, I consider myself to have been apprenticed by about three people, okay. uh, three different gentlemen. Unfortunately, uh, one of them, Polly, passed away recently. Uh, he was one of the main people that I really soaked up a lot of stuff from. Um, and he moved back out to San Francisco and recently passed away. And then the other one was a guy named Rich. And, uh, I think Richie is probably done with tattooing uh, because of the pandemic mm -hmm. and just like, you know, he's just sketched out by it. And quite frankly, he's probably getting close to 60 at this point. Okay. Uh, and I can get it because your body can't handle it for all that long. And then the other gentleman, uh, Rob, <laughs> wound up actually like is the guy that I like, he owned the shop that I worked at and, uh, he kind of was the same type of authoritarian figure as my father had been. Mm. 
And uh, so I got into this relationship with him uh, with learning and apprenticing and stuff like that. And so the first tattoos, like the first 25 to 50 tattoos that I did were done um, with this guy screaming at me in front of the client uh. <laughs> in a real tight space. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it was a, yeah, there was a lot of fuck ups. Um, there was a lot of like, there was a couple of times where I was like, uh, pulled aside and told to like go take a walk around the block uh, <laughs> and figure out if this was some shit that I was actually going to be able to do or if oh, I need to take a hike. Really? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I'd actually take the whole walk around the block, and then by the time I get back, I'd be yelled at for taking too long to take a walk. <laughs> it's like, well, you should have made your fucking mind up, <laughs> you know, faster than that. Like, do you really want to do this at all? It's like yeah i really want to do this like i'm back but it took so long i was like we told me around the block (laughs) (laughs) after being like verbally abused for a half hour while i mangled this person's skin i thought i'd actually like take a breath (laughs) but but then you know i came back and like we just kept teaching you know there's only so much that you can actually teach somebody um about this to like there's really only so much you can teach somebody you really have to like kind of get in there and you have to have an understanding of it and you have to have kind of a feel for it um uh and uh that uh, luckily that came pretty quick oh yeah but uh there's definitely plenty of things out there wandering around that uh hopefully they don't they're like i don't know i don't even remember who did this <laughs> like somewhere my spirit's like thank you if i thank see you so I'm much gonna, yeah I see yeah tattoo artist i'm gonna kick him in the balls <laughs> it's like it's like well you know that guy doesn't live here anymore you know <laughs> and that's kind of what i tell people when they're like oh man you did this like 20 years ago on me like i want to think i want to think about adding to it and do the sleeve and whatever i'm like yo the dude that did that's gone yeah, that's like, my twin brother, man. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, he's he's out, been he out. Yeah. Like, yeah, he moved. There's been like three other dudes who've lived in this place <laughs> since then. So <laughs> you know, it's like, um, hate to break it to you, but that's just kind of how I don't know. It's kind of like how the life works. I think uh, <laughs> you know, it's like man, I'm nowhere near the same person that I was when I started. Uh, no, no, that, that's for sure. Yeah, so. Yeah. And you really have figured it out too, because the tattoos you gave me, you know, didn't need any touch-ups. Um, yeah. And, you know, other tattoos that I've got, they almost always need to be touched up or, you know, I always have to go back for something or another. And so you've got sure. that dialed in. And, um, you know, you're not just doing um, your, your standard, um, I, I don't even know the terminology, but like the old sailors tattoos and stuff, like you put your own yeah. spin on it. You have your own style. Yeah. It's like your own psychedelic style. You know, I mean, when I look at a John Bass tattoo, it's like, that's (laughs) definitely John Bass, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And that's what I love about your stuff. I appreciate that. And that was, um, you know, that was one of the first things that I remember, like, and I would when I was starting out, like I would have to glean knowledge from like things I overheard um people would misstep and like say something they shouldn't have said things were very secret uh even at this, this at was this before point. the internet too right or the oh early yeah, stages we, of the internet? The, yeah as far as the internet went like um we had okay so there was this one supply house that we could order from uh as apprentices and like new tattooers and like you had to pay a $35 a year, I think it was, subscription to get this like three ring binder with all of their shit in it and then a price list. And you could look at their stuff online if you could wait long enough for a picture to download. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but when you ordered from them, uh, you would have to call them directly, get on phone with somebody. Um, you would have to give them part numbers so that they could get a packing picking list together. And then uh, you would have to get money orders ready. Uh, So you would have to go to the bank or like one of these like cash and go places or something like that 
and you would have to get or the post office and you would have to get a money order mm. and so like if, like we used to like, we were so poor uh doing this that um because you just give up like i gave up everything yeah. in order to like get into this uh and so like we were there was like a three or four of us that were just so fucking poor that we were eating bean burritos from taco bell <laughs> drinking fucking hams uh <laughs> when we could afford it right and then you know we would have to pool money to buy supplies and when mm. we pooled money to buy supplies we had to be riding each other's asses to get the cash there because one of us had to go get the money order, uh, you know, and have that money order there because when the UPS guy showed up, that shit wasn't there. It was like, oh, well, you don't get your shit today. And if you need your shit today, yeah, tough luck, right. you know? Right. <laughs> so, um, wow. but, uh, but yeah, so like that was during that era for sure. Um, Back and in the so, day. But yeah, it was. It was seriously back in the day. But I remember my, I remember Polly um, talking to a client that had come in to see him because he had seen a tattoo on Paul's mom that Paul did. And the guy was like, he's like, I saw it immediately, knew it was yours. And I knew who had done it. And uh, I was in the back just kind of sitting there not saying shit minding my fucking p's and q's watching him draw this design that the guy wanted and he just kind of looked over and he's like that's what you're striving for mm. he's like that's it he's mm. like when you have like an almost completely recognizable tattoo to somebody that has never fucking met you and yeah. they know that he's like that's what you want yeah. and um it's definitely something that I think is kind of lost today, uh, unfortunately, but um, I'm just, I'm on my own path. So <laughs> I figure yeah. whatever, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I dig it. I'm glad people, I'm glad people dig it and they like wearing it uh, because sure. it's great. You know, it's a great time for me. Well, in, what's your Instagram handle again, just so that people can look you up? It's just at John Bass one uh, okay. at J O N B A S S and the number one. Okay. So because, yeah, like I said, you do beautiful work, and I've got some of your your old artwork here. So, oh boy. Yeah, look at that. Look. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. That one's actually there's a print of that hanging in my station over at one of the shops I work in now. But you've come such a long way since these days. Like I, this yeah. has been hanging in my studio for a long time. Like I love this yeah. thing. But yeah. you have advanced like drastically since since these days for sure. Yeah, I, I mean got, that's like 2013 or 14 or something like that. Probably and I have one more too. That yeah, I remember trading that one with you. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah, that one that one was a real weird abstract when I was just like, all right, like I'm just totally. gonna go with this. Totally. I think that was the first. I think that was one of the first times I fucked around with gouache. Okay. Uh, or acrylic gouache, I should uh, say. Yeah. Um, so sometimes with the painting stuff, I get a lot looser um, because I can. Because you can, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just, it really breaks up. Uh, it really breaks it up for me because you have to be, uh, you have to be just so on point most of the time with tattooing. Sure. Uh, I mean, I like it when people are okay with me getting looser with it. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's only, when you shine, you know, that's when you do your best work is when you can just I'll really only yourself. allow myself to, yeah, I'll only allow myself to get so loose though. Um, yeah. It's like, all right, like you gotta like, like rain it out a little bit. Well, you know? Yeah. To a certain so, extent. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, like, I mean, like the piece that I did, the, the big piece I did today, like really, I just didn't have any parameters. Nice. Uh, I was, I was told this one particular subject, make a mashup mm. and i want my bag done with that and i was like all right like here we go and like i've still got some stuff to add but um so after, that was your only direction uh, make a mashup that was it yeah yeah wow. it's based on a done it it's based on a done ed hardy series of paintings that were done in the mid 90s uh that are owned by another tattooer now the paintings are owned by another tattooer in texas uh down in austin um but Hardy tattooed them. They've been tattooed a few times, but um, the version I did today of it uh, with the panther and the rose, like that was like that was all drawn straight from just my head uh, in a series of uh, 
just tracing paper over tracing paper. Um, I didn't even use my iPad for that, which is what I use for a lot of stuff now. Like uh, all of my final drawings are still done by hand. I, I still can't give up the leg. Like I have to have, there has to be some of the character from my hand in it. Yeah. And I don't believe the iPad allows that really. Mm, yeah. Wow. So that's cool. Um, yeah. Sometimes it just, if, if it starts looking real sterile, I get worried. <laughs> i'm just like yeah i don't know about that <laughs> i'm gonna have to throw something in there to jazz this up yeah i don't it's like an eyeball want, or something yeah crazy. right yeah the robots cannot take over <laughs> like i have i'm making decisions on this so. yeah yeah uh, so yeah but uh, like i said i'm real fortunate man like with the stuff that i get to do and the people i get to tattoo uh um it's i'm a very fortunate person uh yeah. like that's for sure well, you're, like I said, your tattoos are very specific. And like I said, when I look at your tattoos, I definitely recognize it's your work. But I'm guessing that you turn people away sometimes too. Like if Joe I Schmo do. comes in off the street and says, listen, man, Nickelback is my favorite group and I want them <laughs> tattooed across my chest. I'm guessing you're just going to tell him to go somewhere else. I don't know, man. That might be a hard one to turn down. <laughs> but the killer for that, the killer on that one's going to be if I got to listen to that. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> you know, like if I can listen to like sloppy seconds there you and go. like and tattoo, you know, a Creed or whoever, like Nickelback <laughs> on you, like we might work that out. Um, but no, there's a lot of stuff that uh, I wouldn't say a lot, I guess, but um, there's a fair amount of things that uh, I definitely will refer other people for um, yeah. because it's just not, I don't know. Sometimes it's not even that it's not in my wheelhouse because I, I came up in a shop where I had to do absolutely everything. Um, but um, knowing your shortcomings is, uh, a good thing for everybody, I think. And, um, uh, there's definitely quite a few that I have where I'm just like, you know, like you could get that from me, but, um, like sitting there and doing a tattoo while I'm trying to figure out why I'd rather be doing any fucking thing else in the world <laughs> right. is not going to be conducive to like getting the great, the great tattoo from me, uh, <laughs> you know, at all. So I'll be like, yo, I know this person over here. I know this person over here and like, they can help you or, you know, whatever. So I refer people a lot. Uh, sure. um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of stuff where I'm like, there's a lot of like really heavy, uh, there's a lot of really heavy memorial stuff that sometimes I kind of have to pass on. Uh, it's, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Like, I really enjoy having fun tattooing. Um, I like for my clients to have fun and stuff like that. And it's not that you can't have fun. Like, I love doing the memorial tattoos when people are, like, jovial and it's been the t proper amount of time has passed and things like that. Like, everybody can kind of, like, lighten up a little bit. Sure. Uh, especially if they're doing like an inside joke tattoo or something like that. Um, some of the really heavy stuff though, like I just like, you can, after this long in this business and, and working with people, like, I think you get to a point where um, you can just, if you're really intuitive, you'll just be like, yo, like th this person is not over this to the point where they should even be considering this. Mm. And you just kind of have to like, step away you know um and so that happens but uh um overall at this point i'm kind of just doing whatever people you know whatever people want to do uh, fortunately most people want to do what i want to do um and <laughs> that's taken a really long time to kind of get there but uh i also don't tattoo a whole i don't tattoo nearly as much as i used to um mm -hmm. anymore uh i keep myself busy in other ways and I really am only tattooing like probably two or three days a week now. Um, okay. And well, you're making these tattoo guns now too, right? I am. And they're not guns. They are machines. Machi uh, Excuse me. They, yeah. They, I don't know the terminology them. on this it's, stuff. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. They are, ta they are tattoo machines. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I've been making tattoo machines for, I don't know, pretty hardcore for about the last five years. Okay. Um, but How did that, I, start? that started when I had to make, I had to build my own machines when I started out of a box of parts that were sitting in my uh, main, I guess, mentor's garage. Um, and he and I went out there and he was like, well, 
like I didn't really have money to buy machines and like mass produced machines weren't a thing even yet for another couple of years. And so um, he's like, well, I got all these frames and I got all these coils and I got all these parts. And so he actually, I was the last person to learn this from this guy. Um, and granted, he's not by no stretch of the imagination, like the best editor or anything like that. And I've learned a lot from a lot of people down the road, but um, I had to put my own shit together and um, learn how to cut springs, um, learn how to, you know, bend back some of the uprights and things like that uh using torches and all kinds of stuff uh so it worked out that i'd been in metal work for a while um but uh yeah i had to put them together and then when i got them together and like he had shown them to paulie who i was talking about before he's showing him how they're running and everything he's like yeah they're running perfect and he's like sits down at the table it's like right in the middle of the shop and it's where we just all kind of can you know hung out and he's like all right he's like take them completely apart and just put the parts wherever like you don't have to like don't keep them in order of any sort and so i did that and my heart was breaking <laughs> while this is going on because i was like man you guys are just talking about how rad these were and they yeah. work so good and so i took these all apart and like had nothing but fucking pieces mm. and he's like all right now I'll build them back together and make them work the same way they did Ooh. and he's like because you got a tattoo with them tomorrow <laughs> and so uh trial by fire <laughs> is, <laughs> is how i figured out some of this stuff mm. but uh uh, yeah, so that's how that that's how the interest started. So I've always been able to work on my own machinery. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been able to repair it, work on it, uh, and replace things. And then I got into building them because I was hanging out with another couple of machine builders, um, my friend Dan in Omaha at Team Victory Machines, and then my friend Aaron Bloomquist down in Rockford. Uh, um, with Eminent Tattoo Supply, and so I've known these guys for quite some time. Aaron, actually quite a bit longer than Dan, and um, I just kind of, like, with anything, I start picking brains a little bit, and uh, the biggest impetus to do this was the fact that I purchased a machine from a builder, um, and it wasn't doing what I needed it to do. Um, I'm a real fast tattooer, uh, I need something that's going to push groupings of needles really quickly and move with my hand speed. And so I bought this machine. I thought it would do this and it didn't. I retuned it, did all kinds of things to it. And I was doing a guest spot at a friend's shop down in Illinois. And I was like, man, I'm like, this thing is just like, I have to sell it or something. It's just, it's just not working for me. Um, and he's like, well, it's because it's this. And so he kind of explained, he's like, well, you know, it's because it's this kind of machine and it's this style and it's been chopped up this way or whatever. And like, there is a way for me to make a machine that is this small, just as powerful as I need it to be. And he was like, no, man, that's not, that's how these are made. This is what this is and whatever. And it was like everything else in life where you're told you cannot do it. I was like, well, fuck this. I'm doing it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> uh, stubbornness once again comes in <laughs> uh, and, and set me off on my quest so um so from that point on i started trying to build like the most powerful and compact machines that i could and uh um i'm getting to a point now uh where weight plays a huge factor more so than it did uh when i was younger um i'm getting a bit arthritic and mm. so uh, having something that is balanced and a little bit more weight forward or just lightened really helps out, like as far as fatigue on my hands and stuff. So, um, so I went at it kind of full bore and I've kind of gotten it to a point where like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not building production models or anything like that. Everything's still a one-off. Um, but, uh, you know, I've gotten it to where I like it and where, for the most part, I use mostly my own machines. Uh, when I'm when they're not sold, it's because I'm testing them to make sure that they can go out to somebody who might want one. Okay. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's kind of a nice uh, it's a nice side uh, it's a nice side business that keeps me really occupied. 
um, and also keeps me connected to tattooing when I'm doing stuff that can't, you know, that's not tattooing. Um, because I can't tattoo nearly as much as I used to. I can't pull those 12 hour days, you right. know, anymore. It's right. just not possible. Yeah. Well, it's like an evolution of your art, man. Um, and I remember yeah. looking at pictures of, of your early machines and they looked sort of primitive, but you know, I knew you knew what you were doing and I'm sure they worked just fine. And now I'm looking at these machines you're making and they look like just a solid handmade little piece of beautiful machinery. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're sick looking, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. There, um, there's a lot that goes into those. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been a lot of learning. Uh, there's only, once again, it's one of those things where like only so much can be learned um, with somebody sitting there. And you know, I don't have anybody else around here that I, that can be in my workshop and sit there and show me this or show me that. And I'm working with pretty limited tools. So um, I play pretty fast and loose uh, for a man with no insurance on a drill press, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like, there's been some sketchy business going on. As long as you still press. have all your digits, you're good to go. <laughs> They're there. Um, you know, so, uh, so yeah, like it's, you know, it's one of those things where like, uh, you know, I, through conversations and just like through a little bit of like looking on YouTube and stuff like that, I taught myself how to braise. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've known how to solder for a long time, but I'm far better at that now. Um, and now I'm cutting my own sides and bases uh, out of just plate steel that I keep, st I keep plate stock now and mm -hmm. round stock in, in the shop all the time. So I cut a lot of my own stuff. I'm eventually like in the next like month or two, I'm going to have my friend Aaron uh, start doing uh, water jet cut plates for me mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, but it's really been a long period of time of working with a lot of stuff like a lot of sides and bases and things like that that other people have developed and that people have given to me or that I've bought lots of when they were clearing out and things like that so um I've been experimenting with all kinds of different things for probably the last like four and a half five years and just finding you know I wasn't I was never set on like I, there's no way I'm going to take over the tattoo machine world and like make a million dollars on it right. i don't want to because <laughs> <laughs> the big problems and responsibilities come with that kind of thing but uh if i can keep myself occupied and busy and yeah. like thinking uh and you know like mental exercise and just learning new stuff um while also being able to make a little money off of it mm -hmm. uh and make other people's other tattooers lives easier yeah uh yeah. you know so be it uh because that was really the that was the whole inspiration kind of behind it was like i want my life to be easier i'm mm -hmm. sick of expending this much hand strength on things you know right. like kind of like okay i need a hammer drill i know what i need <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and the hammer drill is going to do all the work so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's make a hammer drill <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so cool, man. And then I you mean, listen to root then you listen to rumors for years about how heavy handed you are. And you're like, no, but I've made this thing. Like, this is what this does. <laughs> I'm just I I'm just the monkey on the other end of it. <laughs> so <laughs> Oh, so it's not you that's heavy handed, it's the machine. It's the machine doing the work, man. Yeah. If I were like if I were like really grinding into somebody, like I'd have lawsuits on my ass. <laughs> like you can't people will be walking around with like half their body with like a blue blowout. It's like oh, going yeah, in one dude. direction. It's like the machine itself is like, I make those things to keep me from having to do that kind of work. Okay. Uh, like I make those things to like, it's like, all right, like all I got to do is turn my power knob and yeah. we're going, you know? So, um, so yeah, that, uh, that is one, that's one of the biggest reasons. It's like, I just got tired of struggling with shit. Um, and people weren't really making, most people weren't making things for what I needed to do. And, uh, from what I can tell for the most part, like at least, you know, from the time period that I started out in, that everybody does this differently. Mm -hmm. Um, there's like a core value of things that like work, um, that are kind of universal, but like 
realistically, everybody's playing their own lawn dart game. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, okay. Right? <laughs> you know, yeah. He said this works, but this guy does it like this. And like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to try a mixture, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, uh, so that's kind of how it's been. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of your craziest tattoo stories? Um, either client, cra craziest clients, or just uh, tattooing the craziest things. I don't know, whatever you got, man. I'm sure you've got a bunch of stories. Well, I think I reached the pinnacle of my career. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know that there will be any higher peak for me uh, than uh, when I was asked to tattoo a Sasquatch uh, riding the Loch Ness Monster with a leprechaun on the Sasquatch's shoulder. And I did that last, towards the end of last year, I believe. Um, <laughs> so um, that is definitely, that's on a really great client. Uh, my client, uh, his name is Adam too, uh, oddly enough, but um, really cool dude. He's like seven feet tall and has a beard down to his knees. Um, <laughs> so he's a very, very cool dude, but he's kind of up for anything for the most part. And uh, he like hit me with this email that I really should probably just go back and print off. Yeah, right. And frame it. Gotta frame and, that one. Yeah, just like here, this is next to my license, like <laughs> wherever I'm working. Like, <laughs> I was qualified for this. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. There's a lot it's right like, there. I don't know. You know, it's like it worked, something worked. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, so that was probably one of the most unusual requests. But uh, wow. I mean, I've tattooed all over the body, man. Uh, like, I've tattooed genitals. I've tattooed the bottoms of feet. Uh, I've tattooed, you know, palms, uh, mm. faces, heads. You know, the only area that I have not tattooed is like somebody wanting something like directly like around their asshole. Um, <laughs> but I have had to tattoo inside of butt cheeks in order to like do uh, like a Japanese back piece background. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, I, one of the crazier things was this guy that like, he called uh, the first shop that I worked at. He called on a Saturday, which was our walk-in day. Um, so no appointments could be set up. You were just like straight up. You're w whatever the fuck walks in, you guys are doing it and you're on a fucking rotation. Mm. So, you know, it's like, all right, whatever. But this guy, for some reason, like knew me or knew of me. And uh, he was looking for a genital tattoo. <laughs> And uh, I didn't get it. So, like, I got, like, my friend John, who was a piercer there, still is actually at that shop. Um, he answered the phone or took the call because I was busy and was like, everybody else in the shop passed on this <laughs> because this guy wants to get his dick tattooed. Right. And I was like, I'm like, John's like, well, here's his number. I don't know what your thoughts are on it. And I was like, I don't know, what are my thoughts on that? You know, like, I don't really know. Like, that hasn't been posed to me yet. And so, what did he want tattooed on his dick? He wanted, and this was like a weird description to get over the phone. Uh, he's like, I want tiger stripes. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And so, anyway, I was talking to John and I was like, what do you think, dude? I'm like, you pierce genitals on men and women. So, like, what is your thought on it? He's like, well, I don't know. He's like, I guess it doesn't matter. He's like, it's skin, skin. And I was like, yeah, but it's like, you know, it could be weird. And he's like, well, just fucking lay down ground rules and like call it a day. You know, like, if he wants to do it, he'll do it. If not, fuck him. Oh and so, God. like, all right, cool. And so, uh, John kind of, John kind of made it okay because I was like, I didn't care. Yeah. one way or the other i was like it is really just skin to me mm -hmm. and uh because you get to a point in this where like and it comes real real early where like you know it used when i was working around college kids and stuff like that like when shit was not nearly as like correct i guess as it is today where right. like 
these frat boys and like you know jocks and stuff like that are just like regular fucking dudes that like whatever hang out at the car dealership would come in and be like i bet you get to tattoo a lot of boobies <laughs> and you're like yeah well you do but like you gotta remember i'm tattooing all the boobies you know <laughs> so like i'm kind of like a doctor at this point where it's yeah. like i'm not even seeing any this, there is no interest to me other than the fact that i have this patch of skin and i need to put this image on it totally. and i need to make them i need to make them feel as comfortable as possible and i got to keep my own shit together so that i can just get through the mental trauma that is tattooing yeah. in general and so um because it's unnatural as fuck and there's nothing natural in tattooing nothing natural about it it's fucking weird and it's a weird fucking job and it's a weird <laughs> fucking skill to have that's just that but anyway this guy i get this guy on the phone and i was like talking to him he's like well i'm coming down from green bay and i was like dude i'm like my shift's over in like three hours he said, be here an hour and a half and i told him the price and i'm like look it's 500 bucks yeah. I was like, and I expect a tip in cash because that whole place was set up for me to like basically not get nearly the money that I should have been getting. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, another thing you learn very early right. on, but uh, um, <laughs> somebody else is buying things on your paycheck. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, um, now I know it's just me drunk on Amazon. Um, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so this guy's like, I'm coming down. I want to like, you know, I want to get this blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, cool, man. Come on down. He's like, I'll pay it. I was like, all right, cool. So he gets down there, seems to be a decent, normal dude for the most part. And uh, we get into my room. He's all signed up and everything. And I had to draw these stripes like and I'm thinking, okay, like, I was like, so you want, like, the whole shaft and, like, tiger stripes and whatnot, right? He's like, no, I don't want the shaft done. He's like, I want them to spiral out of the urethra and onto the head. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, like, my stunned ass is like, whoa, uh, for real? Like, uh, like, you sure you want that? Oh, and he was like, God. He's like, yeah, and I was like, he's like, can you do that? And I was like, well, yeah, kind of do anything, but like, I'm like, you sure you want that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's not it's like, gonna I don't feel good. You, yeah, I was like, I don't know if you've ever touched that area. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, <laughs> so anyway, he's like, no, he's like, yeah, I draw it on there, and I was like, you know, I had given him the whole speech, like any sh funny shit happens, just remember, I have a needle in your dick, and. <laughs> <laughs> things could go so poorly right because of that <laughs> um, oh so he was cool he was cool um but uh anyway so i get this drawn on there and everything like that and like i'm tattooing it and it's just bloody like and he has to stand up for this and just hang his fucking dick onto an armrest that i have covered up with like dental bibs and stuff like that because i was like i don't know how else i would do this like laying down is going to be weird I need something to like press it against and stretch because you have to stretch the skin while you're working. And so I'm just like tattooing this fucking bloody mess, hoping this black is going in there and whatnot. Cause I'm not like that far, not that long in the tooth of tattooing at this point, <laughs> but it's going in. It seems to be working. And he's just sitting there like taking it like a champ doing all right. <laughs> he's just kind of like looking at the sky, like, Oh, whatever. And I'm like, and I'm like, I'm tattooing like, into his urethra oh, God. okay like oh yeah oh my god <laughs> so like i'm talking some wild like gotta feel like pissing fire type shit does he <laughs> so, have to be hard for this like, like is it no he has no, he it has to be you know it has to be flaccid actually okay um, okay so like if you if you were to do it if you were to do it while somebody was erect i think that you might have because it's such a vascular area um i think that you would probably have even more bleeding than you do oh. already okay um it's it was like driving a fence post into a sponge <laughs> so um that, that sums up like how tattooing the head of a penis <sighs> i'm just like, trying to basically it. was yeah it sounds like yeah it, it was like God. almost like so i was using like this eight 
needle liner, like eight needle shader or whatever. And it was like leaving marks in the fucking flesh. And like, and I'm not talking about just pigment, but like you were seeing like indentions, like, uh. and it was because it's every, it's just like, I don't know, man. It's like, if you took a hand, it's like, it's like if you had Gallagher with Jello, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, this thing's about to blow apart, but like, I don't know, like maybe it's going to work. And so it was working. And like, finally I got to the end of this thing and I like wrapped it up on the underside of the Corona. All right. Where the, like, you know, where there's like the, the stormtrooper helmet. <laughs> and so anyway, I'm like wrapping it up over there and like, get this done. And I'm like, all right, man, I'm like, I think we're all good. And I like cleaned it up, like washed them off. I was like, you can take a look in the mirror, check it out, see if it's, you know, if this works and he's looking at it and like, I'm thinking this guy is like going to jump over there and just be like, yeah, dude, it's fucking best. Like, let's wrap it up, call it a day. I'm out. <laughs> he's like sitting there like, hmm. Like, he's giving it the third degree, like side eye and shit. And uh, I was like, is there something I can do? Like, is something wrong? Or like, well, you know, what's up? And he's like, well, he's like, it's really good, but I'm, I want to know something. And I was like, yeah, sure. What? You know, he's like, can you go to the underside of the head with all of these solid black lines? Because that's kind of how I was picturing it. Uh. And I feel like it's just incomplete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm oh like, my God. <laughs> like, yeah, I suppose. Like, I guess I can do that. And I was like, are you sure? Once again, I'm like, are you sure you want this? And like, yeah, this guy's fucking sure he wants this. Dang. You know, he, he's he's already paid the money. He's taking the ride. Uh. And so, uh, <laughs> so I was like, well, come on back over. And so he stood there while I like flipped the head of his dick around and tattooed the underside of the head of his penis in the most sensitive part that exists on there. So like and you flip I it around him. and you're like holding it down and tattooing it like on a table or a board or something. Yeah, it's like an armrest where you would like uh, stick your arm. He's dude. he's standing up. He's yeah. standing up for yeah. all this. And so yeah, I was like flipping it around like like I got it, I got it all done. And he went back over to the mirror, and that's when he was like ah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's just like oh. that was like one of the, that was one of those that was like I said it was early in my career and it was one of those days where I was just like, Man, that was a wild ride, you know. I've, I've but done it all. This, I've seen it all. Now I can retire. Yeah, yeah. Well, this guy though, this guy who I thought was like going to jet back to Green Bay, he's like, he's like, hey, he's like. You said you were done with your shift, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I'm going over to that bar across the street. He's like, I'm going to get a couple of shots of whiskey. I was like thinking in my mind, no shit, you know? <laughs> and so like, he's like, I'm going to get a couple of shots of whiskey. Like, do you like bourbon? And I was like, yeah, because yeah. I'm like basically too poor to fucking afford bourbon right. at this point. And so he's like, meet me over there. I'll buy you some drinks, dude. And I'm like, oh, this is weird. Like, this could go so many ways. I just had and your prick in my hand for hours. Yeah, exa yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was like an hour. And I was like, I was like, yeah, I'll come over, whatever. And like the piercer, my friend John was like, you sure you're gonna go over there? I was like, yeah, dude, I think he's fine. Yeah. So I go over there, sure shit, dude's totally fine. Like he's kind of weird or whatever, but like who's not? Right. And uh, you know, <laughs> we're just sitting there shooting the shit after I've like tattooed the fucking bejesus out of this guy's dickhead oh and God. he's just like talking about it like it's the greatest fucking thing ever <laughs> loads me up with a bunch of fucking uh, maker's mark and pbr and uh took off and came back and went back to fucking green bay and i've oh. never seen him since but i hope he's out there doing his thing with it oh, i'm sure he is <laughs> 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 he didn't he didn't seem to have like you know he didn't have too much of a complexion about like whipping it out and throwing it on a fucking arm wow. so i was like what else dude <laughs> let's do it <laughs> oh. 
Uh, there you go. I got, I guess I got paid and I made you happy. So, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, that's part of it sometimes. Wow. Um, the other guy that I did that to, um, totally different design, but it was a young guy. This guy was a little older. The first guy was, but the next guy that I did that to, cause it kind of got out. I think that I was the one to tattoo genitals. Oh no. And so, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And so like, <laughs> nobody else in madison would tattoo genitals but me and so i just got this work um and so anyway the next guy he came in and he was a traveling cable contractor for like spectra or whatever charter uh back then mm -hmm. and so i was like yeah this is the price you know whatever and I expect to be tipped in cash. <laughs> handsomely. And, uh, no fun. Yeah, handsomely. <laughs> no funny business. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, no problem. Like, I can't do it today because I got to go install some, like, um, fucking whatever their line was. He's like, I got to go install all this line. And then, you know, I'll be back. You know, like, can I come in on, like, Tuesday or whatever? Because I'm off on that day, and I just live in this hotel and whatever and install cable and shit. And I was like, um, yeah, sure, dude. Like, I'll take a deposit, set it up, whatever. And I was like, so what are you doing? He's like, I want a jackhammer. <laughs> like, he's like, I want, like, a traditional old-school jackhammer on the shaft. And I was like, and he was like, should I bring my girl with me, like, for, like, fluffer? You know, to like so <laughs> stencil can go on and stuff. I was like, nah, dude, it's got to go on. Like limp, you know, everything's got to be flaccid. I was like, so don't bring her. <laughs> um, like, please don't show up with like a raging erection. Um, <laughs> just, dude, like, I took four Viagra, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, like at this time, like during this time that this was all going on, like in the early 2000s, like it was like some big fucking thing for some reason for these younger dudes to come in to the tattoo shop and announce to everybody that they wanted to know about how much it was to get their dicks tattooed. I don't know what it was or anything like that, but okay. it was happening a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and it happened a lot on like Saturday and Sunday. And eventually after I'd done a few of these things, it's like, I'm fucking Doc Holiday, and I'm like, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> and so you would see, like, faces change real fast. <laughs> They're like, whoa. Like, that dude knows what's up. <laughs> he actually like, wants to tattoo my dick. Yeah, yeah, he's done this. Like, he's, he's like, it's like dollar signs popped up right like yeah he has like a vested financial interest in making sure my penis gets tattooed uh <laughs> which is true um you know i got rent to pay right um, but uh so this kid you know this younger kid he's like traveling like i used to so we did have that in common and we talked a little bit about that but he comes in i get the stencil on him and everything like that and i'm tattooing him and like it's just like real straightforward, like black, bold outline, bold black, whip shaded, bright yellow color, like the old school ones were with like a couple of red buttons for probably shut off or whatever. I'm tattooing this thing. I get it done. He gets in the mirror and he's just stoked. Like he is fucking <laughs> ecstatic about this thing. And I was like, so is that going to, you know, they're going to work? And he's like, yeah, man, it's fucking rad. And he's like, He's like, I can't wait to show my girlfriend. Uh, and I was like, rad. I was like, awesome. And so he pays up. He's like, look, he's like, I'm only in town for the next couple of days. He's like, he gave me like some money. And he was like, and it was like actually more than I would even expect for a tip on that. But um, he's like, I'm going to come back. He's like, I'm going to give you some more money because like you did a really great job. And so uh, he's like, my girlfriend's going to be stoked. <laughs> I was like, well, don't go like don't go using the jackhammer like You're until like have to it's hold a, off for a while <laughs> yeah it's like hold off on that you know like i don't want you to get too wild with it like you <laughs> gotta let that heal and so anyway he's like yeah man whatever and so he leaves and everything's good two days later he comes like bouncing back up the stairs in this joint and i luckily was not working or anything like that and he's like he's like dude it's so fucking rad he's like my girlfriend loves it and my wife even likes it. <laughs> <laughs> he's 
like, here's 60 bucks. Uh, and he just like bounces right back out the stairwell. And I was like, all right, man. I'm like, cool. And that's my fucking did I, my job is done you know like i, I did i did my work i'm out <laughs> so, here doing the lord's work <laughs> yeah, <exactly. Yeah. laughs> it ain't much but it's honest oh, <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, so yeah so those were two really good stories from early on that i had i had a lot of fun with uh with both of those guys actually it was pretty interesting that's um, awesome <laughs> and then the first female genitalia that I did was a fucking wild, weird scene, too. Um, that was like, that was so weird. Like, I was just uncomfortable the whole time, basically, because I was like, I thought I was tattooing this lady uh, down there. She had a butterfly that went on her pubic mound. And the tendrils from the lower part of the wings came down on to the, like the inner part, like just outside of the business area. And I thought she was with her husband because that's how they were treating each other. <laughs> and uh, so I'm tattooing this and like the owner is too cheap to put the fucking air conditioning on. It's like a warmer, humid spring day as we will get here in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Uh, the windows are open and the breeze is coming in, but it's not doing too much. I'm inexperienced. Therefore, I'm 20 degrees warmer than anything in the entire fucking building except for the knob and tube wiring. And uh, <laughs> this fucking guy is eyeballing me like across the room and not really saying anything. He's just like watching me like while you're tattooing. While I'm tattooing, okay. yeah, down in her vaginal area. And um, I was just like, I don't know what, I was like, am I going to, do I have to like hit this fucking guy in the head and reset him? <laughs> or like, what the fuck's <laughs> going on? Because like, he's not really talking and he's not making any kind of facial, like, he's just like looking. Yeah. And she's talking to me, you know, and I was like, yeah, I'm really sorry. Like, I got to move this and like, I got to do this and whatever. And <laughs> so I'm like doing all this stuff. And then all of a sudden her phone rings. And like, this is like back when they made the like Nokia that like you couldn't destroy. And then also like flip phones and stuff like that. And so anyway, this flip phone's going ape shit. And I'm like, look, you should probably answer that because i can't have you with that ringing and like me tattooing and stuff and so she's like okay well you can't tattoo while i'm on this phone call and i was like okay whatever and so i'm sitting there i'm just like fuck I'm like this thing's gonna this like phone call's taking too long the and uh yeah it's the fucking husband <laughs> and i was like she's like okay well i'll be home later blah 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 uh, and like he has no idea where she is because there's no sound or anything and like i still got this dude over here like across the way like giving me the crusty eye and like she's like okay well you can start again and i was like <laughs> so you don't want him to hear the tattooing but you're going to show up at home right? with your crotch tattooed. <laughs> How's that going to go over? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. How'd that get there? <laughs> I think I got it from a toilet seat. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, so that was a very weird... And that dude, that little squirrely dude that was like her boyfriend or whatever, he was just like... Like the whole time was like hairy eyeball like on me, and I just like I said like I just kept wanting to be like, dude, I'm gonna hit you and fucking push the reset button on this right. and see if we can't like <laughs> jar you into like existence. But <laughs> they paid, so <laughs> good to go. <laughs> yeah. Another honest day's work. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, another honest day's work down in the old genital farm. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh dude so uh, yeah so, so you've those had were some stories you've done some weird stuff i've done some very weird stuff yeah oh, absolutely yeah. I love uh, it. i've I, i've made people come through on some like uh i've made people come through on some like really poorly timed uh and set in front of the wrong person me bar bets uh, that have gone on like, <laughs> too late at night and too far into like a bunch of like uh, beers. Uh, I've, I've I've made a lot of like dreams, unfortunately, come true for some of those folks. 
Uh, like, don't talk about it when people have keys to the tattoo shop. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sometimes you will pay the piper. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, that's a career right there. You could be sitting in an office somewhere. Like <laughs> things could be you worse, know, right? And, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> At least and you got you know some what? stories actually, out of the deal. I got some stories. Uh, I've got a huge art collection. Uh, so that's rad. And I actually did. I quit tattooing like for a brief period of time about two years ago and got a warehouse job. Uh, mm -hmm. And I lasted for, I think it was three shifts. <laughs> um and like these people were super nice and mm -hmm. like it was a it was a fine company and everything like that uh and the people were really cool um but uh you know i just like i came home one afternoon and i was like i can't do it mm -hmm. i'm like i'm feral like <laughs> i'm straight i'm i'm fucking ruined for life uh oh. You know, like I, business was declining just like in every other locale. Like Madison is oversaturated with tattooers. Yep. It's too many tattoo shops. Um, you know, it's just the, it's the natural progression of things. But uh, yeah, I tried going back to normal life and nah, Not can't do it. For it. Yeah. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm forever a pirate now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're so. your own person, man. You got to do your own yeah. thing. Yeah, I have to. Uh, like, I don't, uh, I don't have alarm clocks. Uh, Good. I don't. There's there's a lot of things that I don't have that uh, for, I sometimes take for granted, and then I think about it, and I'm like, wait, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, right. Right. I remember I remember getting up at 4 a.m. to go to this job, you know, or like to go and do this, or you know, being dog tired all day because you wanted to do something in your free time, but um your uh your money making gig is actually like you know is going to trample into that totally. and totally. um but you know at the other on the other end of that whole spectrum like having having a decent work life balance within tattooing is a tough thing also um well dude you and i worked at a casket factory at one point <laughs> we sure did i still have a couple of lids at my parents house no way I do. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, man. indeed. Remember After, the Packer caskets? I remember the Packer the, caskets. The Packer and Bears caskets? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> that's what they were known for, is making, like, specialty sports memorabilia caskets. Special, for the special specialty uh, fiberglass caskets and burial vaults. For the diehard fans, pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <right. Exactly. laughs> oh, my God. There's well, always next year until there's not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> after I, after I hadn't worked there for a while, I knew this, like this, like goth punk rock chick who drove around a hearse and she really wanted a coffin for the back of her hearse. <laughs> like, I could probably get you one. And she's yeah. like, no and I did. I, know a guy. No, yeah. I went over there like at 10 o'clock at night and just took one of their old coffins from out in the <laughs> back of the warehouse. I'm like, here you go. That's where all the scrap the was. Guy. Guy. Yeah. She thought I was the coolest yeah. guy ever. Yeah. And I was like, that's where all the scrap went to. So <laughs> everything, everything sat that... out back. Yeah, everything that I miscut <laughs> in that yeah. grinding booth, like oh, that all was God. out there. So, uh, how yeah, long did dude. you work there? Oh man, um, not wasn't a for long time, was it? Wasn't a long time at all. No, yeah. uh, like I think, um, I think after you left, I was probably only there for maybe like another two, three months or something yeah. like that. Yeah. When I left, um, I think it was Terry that was our supervisor. Yep. Um, but he tried to talk me, he tried really hard to talk me out of leaving. Um, and I was just like, nah, I'm like, like I was getting at that time I was going to get back into, traveling again because i left that job one time early on mm -hmm. uh because it was it was really strange to not be able to hang out with all you guys because you guys all had jobs where you could like go to work and then after that you could come home and like chill have mm -hmm. beers mm -hmm. cookouts all that shit mm -hmm. and my job wasn't like that because i would have to go and live in a hotel or you know like whatever and so i was like man i'm like i'm missing out on like 
this particular part of life kind of and then I came back and I did that for a while and I was like uh, I better go on the road like yeah. I better go back out there um well, that was a rough shop was... to work in man that wasn't dude. Exactly fun no <laughs> not at fiberglass all fiberglass all day oh my dude. god fucking full face clear respirator yeah like with the shield and the like you'd have to change the drums out on it like twice a fucking week you're in a monkey suit and gloves because if you didn't the fiberglass dust would suck all of the moisture from your body <laughs> and then for overtime on the weekend you went and did burials oh really i never did that. yeah that was yeah <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here got to go do the burials oh my <laughs> so, gosh. so it was like yeah you're gonna go to champagne on oh. saturday morning and once they like lower them in there they'll put the lid on the um on the vault for you and then you got to jump down on top of it after the family leaves <laughs> and pour the epoxy around the perimeter. Oh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that kind of shit. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, I had some pretty, like, weird interactions with funeral directors and just, like, different family people where they were, I was there doing burials and stuff because they would, like, like, you're in work clothing. You know, like you're not dressed for a funeral. Right. You can't be because what you have to do after they're all allegedly gone mm. is going to require you to get real fucking dirty. Sure. And so, <laughs> um, so you're in work clothes. And so they would have you like hide out like some kind of weird hillbilly ninja behind a tree and watch this whole thing. And like you had to take your cues kind of from the like funeral director. <laughs> and he would be, Come on over. And that was when you knew it was like, all right, now I got to jump down in the hole <laughs> with all my epoxy. <laughs> and, and so then you like seal it all up. And you're like, all right, well, I guess I'm out. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I was driving truck for them for a while. And yeah, I ran into some really weird funeral directors like out in West Virginia. Oh, yeah, super yeah. creepy, like family morticians and just. Yeah. Oh, just the weirdest stuff, man. And yeah, dude, I walked into the, it was a place, it was, I think it was in Champagne, actually. It was a mortuary in Champagne. And I walked in and there was nobody around, but there was uncovered, like half uncovered bodies. Yeah. On like gurneys. Yeah. And the fucking funeral director like jumped out like from behind a fucking wall. And it was like, boogie -a -boogie -a. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> like, like, I just need a signature on this bill of lighting and I gotta get the fuck on out. <laughs> He's like, you gotta have a sense of humor about this shit. I'm not <laughs> playing around, man. I yeah. <laughs> this ain't it funny. Really, it, it really did get me thinking, though, there for a minute about becoming uh, a funeral director. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I kind of was like, man, I might be able to do this. Like, they have a weird <laughs> sense of humor. Like, I kind of i could probably do this oh and uh, but then i found out that you have to like like getting in there is like getting into the fucking mob dude oh. like it's straight up like you're going to have to wait out somebody's entire family's lives because <laughs> they just like keep coming like oh. it's a family business almost constantly and uh like once that family establishes themselves, like those are the people that are handling that shit. <laughs> so you're going to be, a, you'll be a peon for a long, long time waiting out those folks to right. take their own journey. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a wild fucking job, dude. Yeah, you did find one of like greatest punk rock record stores, like probably in the country though, didn't That's you? That's true. Yeah. In Pennsylvania. Like out in her, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was Lancaster. In, uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I would yeah. go a bunch of records and bring them home mm -hmm. uh, thursday night drinking night and we'd spin mm -hmm. records and yeah i brought home all kinds of goodies from from that place yeah yeah we learned uh if i remember correctly we learned a lot about new music just from like your trips out east yeah. oh yeah uh, because you had access to all the like lancasters like in the middle of fucking amish country totally yeah but they had a great like, punk rock record store out there. I was like, what? Yeah. yeah like, you're like, yeah, like they got a rad punk rock record store. I was I like, know. and so when I had people, I would talk to people sometimes when I was traveling myself. And I was like, if they were kind of like-minded, I would be like, 
oh shit if you're in lancaster yeah give me some like, records can, yeah i was like get some records because <laughs> yeah. i'm like they got the fucking bomb record store out there and they so did. they'd be like what and i'm like yeah like yeah, like that's <laughs> amish country right and I was like, uh-huh. uh, they got records i come back <laughs> so, with like the sloppy seconds and the cramps and the screeching weasel the yep. descendants and just all kinds of yep. weird stuff and i just went through a playlist of that on my spotify the other day nice uh, just like all kinds of like like boris the sprinkler yeah uh like we used to go see those guys like coming up here into madison all the time and yeah. stuff like that oh, yeah. so yep. um so yeah like saw those guys um yeah just tons and tons of different bands that mm-hmm. like i mean now you have everything at the tip of your fingers when you have spotify or some other streaming service um but i still have a ton of the cds uh yeah, me too I don't, I don't have very much vinyl and i don't have a record player but uh which probably makes me really unhip at this point in the game but uh <laughs> um but i'm uh, sure you're losing sleep over that yeah well yeah um, <laughs> i just don't i just don't know if i'm gonna be able to keep going <laughs> but, <laughs> You could have to join silent Scientology or something, man. Yeah, some kind of yeah. Please take me away. Yes, I don't have a record player. I'm going to join the Hare Krishnas. Exactly. Life crisis. Yeah. Well, it's like I, there's only one record player that I want, and it was the record player that I had growing up, which was my mom's record player that mm-hmm. she had when she was growing up. It was either hers or it was her cousin's. I can't remember which it was one of the two or maybe they passed it to each other, but it was a Mickey mouse show record player. Oh yeah. (laughs) And it was like, (laughs) uh, it was like all like deep teal and red and graphics and everything. And had like Mickey mouse's head on it. Super big. It was basically like the kind of like fifties or sixties propaganda that you would like brightly colored and like shiny plastic package that you would expect. (laughs) And if I ever find one of those, then I'll finally have a record player because it was its own briefcase that you could like lock up and carry around with you. That's what I'm so, picturing. Like one of those little yeah, boxes. Yeah. Totally. Nice. Yeah. Nice. If one of those ever comes on the market, I'll have a record player. But Adventure until baby. then, yeah. that's it. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I'll go with the weird kitsch or the like, uh, the really like crazy like streamlined like shit that makes me look like i might live in a house that's only made of stainless steel and glass <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and that's fine if you're into that but i don't know <laughs> well i take a trip down memory lane every once in a while and play some of the old music we always used to listen to and uh it just yeah it just reminds me of the old days like and uh, oh yeah I mean, like, what are some of the the standout memories that you have from, you know, back in the, you know, late teens, early 20s, hard party and drinking days? Um, Yeah. I mean, I remember you Um, went into a train one time. I did that. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, I sure did. Uh, Let me me clarify. Got into a car accident with a train, a moving train. Yeah, I got into a car accident with a moving train. Uh, (laughs) And uh, that was pretty. Alive after that one. Yeah, you could say that. Oh uh, <laughs> a few people did. Um, <laughs> they were pretty impressed with me at the hospital. Uh, um, yeah, I broke no bones and received no stitches whatsoever from that. Um, um, and I was not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, so you wrecked I can that beautiful say truck. I did wreck that beautiful truck that uh, Camtoon had built. Yeah, uh, Toon's old truck. Yeah, I really love that thing. And, uh, yeah, I uh, I tested I tested the limits like so many people probably do with uh, um, Bombay Sapphire Gin, and <laughs> she turned on me uh, finally. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, I wound up uh, eating shit on the second to last car of uh, I forgot which train company it was. Um, uh, I can't think of it. Uh, was it? wisconsin southern probably i think Sounds um, right, maybe. Yeah. yeah so i wound up eating shit on i think they said i they figured out from the speedometer i was doing like 50 or 60 um <laughs> into the second to last car of uh that train and so 
I uh, wound up in uh, wound up doing some like serious physical rehab, and then also doing some pretty serious like uh, you know substance rehab there for a little while in order to like clear that whole thing up. Um, and I don't drive after I have things to drink anymore. <laughs> right. So, um, but um, yeah, that was pretty fucking wild, man. I was pulling glass out of my body for my whole windshield shattered into me um but i was pulling glass shards out of myself for like eight weeks <laughs> i'd say like every now and again you just feel something real uncomfortable yeah. and it was like something cutting and grating and it was glass working its way wow. out of my forearms or my chest or some shit like that um Dang. so yeah um that was pretty wild but i think probably like um, that's not necessarily a great time to recall, but, uh, <laughs> right. um, uh, but it's good to revisit, um, and it keeps it fresh so you don't do it again. Yeah, um, right. but, um, I don't know. I think probably some of the better times that I had with like all you guys was probably like the times that like we were fucking around with like psychedelics and shit like that. Right. Um, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> you know, and I still, I still party that way yeah. on occasion um but uh like yeah i think that was probably like some of the more fun times but like we used to play like all kinds of fun drinking games and like mm. you know shit like that i mean we were like i don't know it was weird because we were like really active but really fucked up a lot yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so which i think is maybe part of being young if you're in that like kind of weird punk rock scene and like you're i don't know we were all kind of a bunch of misfits that like totally you know we were misfits that fit together yeah. uh yeah. you know and so it worked out real well but uh yeah i mean i had a great time like uh i mean as far as in my high school teen years and like 20s and stuff like that go like that's one of the reasons i really don't like have any kind of serious affection for high school or anything that was there was because um you know i hung out with you guys and mm. the few people that hung out that were in the same school we all saw each other outside of there and would talk to each other we were all friends at school obviously but like we just had our own other friend group totally. uh that didn't involve school yeah. you know like it, it it wasn't it wasn't predicated on that or anything like that and so uh, which i think was like i don't know it just always seemed like we were doing we were doing stuff that we probably shouldn't have been because we <laughs> thought we were older than we were um <laughs> but uh i don't know for the most part it worked out so oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. but Oh, but man. yeah i mean like i mean I'm, like you know there were some of us that played music everybody yep. loved music Totally. That was a huge part of the huge. whole scene. Yep. Um, and so, uh, and everybody just kind of had their own, like, you know, it was like, okay, well, like, you want to be like, you want to do your weird thing here? You want to do your weird thing here? It was like, everybody was just like, I mean, in the 90s, it was just like acceptable for everybody to be their own fucking weirdo. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if it is anymore. Uh, right. From what I can gather, it seems like it seems like a very, like, seems i don't know at least from what i can glean from what i do see and i'm old mm -hmm. uh so like you know it's like get off my lawn but like <laughs> you guys are having as much fun as we did yeah no um, kidding um, you know before but, like, phones before cell phones you know dude, we were just fucking internet oh dude what yeah like i mean we oh, would have yeah. to call each other on a landline and, and street yeah we plan things out like hours yeah. at a time it's not like you could just call each other up and find each other i think uh if i remember correctly there was myself and maybe one other person that may have had a pager <laughs> where you could get in touch with us like no matter where we were yeah and but then we had to go track we had to go to a payphone, right <laughs> you know it's like oh yeah it's like oh shit he's got a pager look yep. at him up Yep. And then he'll call us from like whatever payphone is closest. Yeah. And no, but that was it. It was like there was no email being sent or oh, like no. there was no like fucking instant messengers or like, you know, if you wanted to see a picture of some shit that I did last summer, you were probably going to have to come over and talk to my mom for a while and wait for her <laughs> to get the album out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> totally. Totally. I like, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything, but there's no caption on it. I'm sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> hashtag you mean the number symbol on the phone right. the pound? <laughs> so, uh, yeah like none of yeah none of that shit was going on and like i don't like i don't think that like oh shit man i don't think that like by the time i got my first cell phone the phone okay so i called the police and fire and rescue for myself when i hit that train and the cell phone that i did that from was a briefcase bag phone oh really that was plugged into my truck <laughs> i remember yeah. those yeah. yeah that's what i had well it's a good thing you had it <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah it was <laughs> the fu- the train wasn't the only thing that i hit that night or that hit me so uh because i got it? hit by another car after the train oh really i don't remember that part yeah okay yeah did you get a I got D- hit by D- one DUI of, out of that one too of usual friends yeah yeah it wasn't talked about because he i did yeah, yeah. oh yeah absolutely yeah. they actually wound up um my boss uh at that engineering company he knew um well first of all he set me off he set me up with a real slimy lawyer <laughs> like, <laughs> like the best uh yeah, like sl- super slimy a lot of money uh <laughs> like um so uh this guy like worked some magic and really because of who i worked for and who he was um and the fact that you know basically i was able to drain my bank account to like pay these people he kind of got me off a little bit Mm -hmm. um and so i wound up not really in a lot of not no not in nearly the kind of trouble that i probably should have been um but uh yeah (laughs) so it was a whole grease ball situation it was like my like awakening to like real grease ball lawyer type shit (laughs) and just like the inner workings of like small town business and the people that ran that stuff uh it was kind of a weird thing uh but it did work um you know it worked and it kept me out of some pretty substantial trouble that i could have been in but i got a hell of a warning from that judge i'll tell you that (laughs) (laughs) he was like i you never come back here like ever ever don't come sir never will i'm out <laughs> like, you know thank you yeah, sir I had, I had i was like nope i'm not coming back here and i didn't go back um, there um but uh no i got hit so i did a full 360 over those tracks that night um my car my truck latched onto that train and that's right uh i got kicked off and spun okay and i landed with my i landed in the wrong lane going the same direction i had been in and uh, a mutual friend of ours had been partying out in that neighborhood and my lights were completely gone and it was a black truck Mm. and that was the darkest fucking area right there uh, on that road and he came through didn't see me hit me head on and spun me a full 180 degrees in the other direction. Really? And then I had to like kick the door open with my good leg because I tore all the ligaments in my other leg. Uh, I had to kick the door open to get out. And uh, he was like standing there losing his fucking mind because I was covered in blood, dude. Like yeah. head to head to toe. um like covered in it and uh i was just like yo chill out (laughs) you know (laughs) i was like you gotta chill the fuck out dude i'm trying to remember who this was can you say or no sean okay okay that's what i was wondering i was wondering yeah okay yeah it was sean and so um anyway like i was like yo dude i'm like i'm getting ready to call the police you need to get the fuck out of here. Oh, got it. Now. Yeah. Like, go and don't fucking talk about it. Right. Like, get the fuck out of here. This didn't happen. No. He went home, and he and my mother were in the Rotary Club together. And so she up out of nowhere after he goes home and spills the beans, she fucking calls my mom at, like, 1230 at night or whatever and is like, have you seen John? 
And she was like, no, why? Like he's out doing whatever John does. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so like, um, she's like, oh, well, that's it. Like, and left it at that. Mm. And like hung up with my mom. I was like, well, I'll see you at Rotary or whatever. And so my mom's like freaking, freaking the fuck out, out at home. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, like I'm on the phone with the fucking sheriff's department. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, I need an ambulance and all this other bullshit out here. And I'm like, but you can take your time. I'm like, I'm having a cigarette and I'm not fucking putting it out before you fucking get here. <laughs> or like, even after you get here, I'm like finishing this fucking thing because I'm going to be in the hospital for a minute. And they were like, 911 was like, what? And they're like, you don't have a say in that. And I was like, no, I'm not fucking putting it out. Like, I'm finishing it. And so they fucking showed up. It was like guns ablaze and they came through and one of my friends that I went to high school with was on the paramedic team. Uh. And so he comes over and like, they already know that they're going to have an issue with me putting the cigarette out. So they send him over because he knows me. He's like, yo man, he's like, you got to put this fucking cigarette out. He's like, you can't be sitting upright on that curb. Like you don't know what kind of fucking spinal injuries you got or anything like that. He's like, if your neck, he's like, your neck could break right now and you could die. And I was like, well, that's fine as long as I finish this fucking cigarette. <laughs> so I'm like, I just had a moment and I need some fucking time. Here. Right. <laughs> and so uh, they let me have a couple more puffs and I was like, all right, put me on the backboard. And so that's when they did it. They put me on the backboard, strapped me in, and that was the end of me making decisions about uh. shit for the rest of the time. So uh, <laughs> I got out of the hospital at like seven or eight the next morning after a nurse and my mom had picked out most of my windshield from my fucking upper body. Uh. Uh, but my whole fucking leg was fucked up. I was in a brace and on a cane for a long time. Yeah, uh, yeah it, was a, it was a trip. <laughs> <laughs> just another day it was a day yeah oh gosh. it was uh, a day that's for sure so uh i don't yeah if anybody out there is listening and thinks they want to relive something like that don't yeah uh, i would advise <laughs> against it i would advise against it uh that's what uber is for <laughs> yeah see and we didn't have that shit no we like, didn't yeah. we didn't have we didn't have uber i don't even know if janesville had like a proper cab company back then yeah, they um, did, but it was pretty sketchy. I used it once, yeah. and the cab driver passed me back a flask, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right." Like, I'm like, yeah. "Oh God, here we go." He's like, "He's like, oh well, you know, like it's about time for my meds." <laughs> like, it's like, it's got a, it's got a spoon, a spoon, <laughs> right. and a lighter up on the desk. <laughs> like, Doctor's orders. Gotta, yeah, got to pull over. <laughs> you tie me off. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh I mean, help a brother out, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the uh, shit that we got away with and all the, you know, I almost hate to say it, but all the driving and shit that we did before your accident. I mean, we, when we didn't have a place to go, we would just like get in one of yeah. our cars, your old Volvo or something like that, yep. drive out into the middle of the woods and just sit there all night, either in the car or else we'd just yep. walk off and start a fire someplace. And Oh, dude. Like, all the time. Yeah. You tell people, you know, if I talk to younger people now when I'm tattooing and stuff like that and tell them, you know, they're like talking about stuff that they do and it's like foreign completely to me because it's like. Well, it just sounds like a normal day to me. Um, you yeah. know, like, I mean, like, really, it's like, oh, well, I chatted with this person. We're going to meet up at, like, this place. And it's like, do you guys go outside right, or anything? Or, like, because, like, we would go out and, like, try to find, like, weirdo sand dunes and, like, shit like that. Yeah. Um, you know, or, like, somebody's parents, like, because, like, we live so close or in a farm community, people's parents had huge swaths of land mm -hmm. where you know you could go out and like they would be like okay well everybody puts their keys in this fucking bucket and mm -hmm. like nobody leaves until tomorrow and you guys have fun yep. you know like everybody's got a tent yep. if you need to use the bathroom you use this one in this part of the house and there's like water soda in the garage and you know which i think is like kind of like I don't know, at least for me in my mind, like I don't remember that kind of stuff in Tennessee. So it was kind of a very Wisconsin thing, um, mm -hmm. at least in my mind, to like have 
um, you know, it was basic, I think probably part of like a farm community type uh-huh. thing where everything's kind of rural and, mm-hmm. you know, everybody's just like, the parents know their kids are going to get into shit. Yeah. Might, might as well keep them close. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. so, uh, and I can't blame them. For I don't sure. have kids, but I can't, I can't blame them. So totally, totally. <laughs> was, totally. we were all a bunch of mischievous little shitheads. <laughs> oh man. We would just drag coolers way out to those sand dunes. Like, I don't know how yeah. far we'd trek that thing back into the woods and we'd have a cooler for the night and we'd start a yep. fire and there yeah. we were. We, I think we'd yeah. sleep out there half the time or. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't even matter if you had a sleeping bag or not. No, like, it was no. Passing it was like, out anyways. It's like, whatever. Like, <laughs> you know, like I think my whole motto for like the longest period of time was like, as long as I wake up with one cigarette, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, I don't give other than that, I don't give a shit. Right. Like as, as long as I wake up with that first cigarette, good to life's go. gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be fine. Oh my god. Uh, so oh. um, so yeah, that was and that you know, I was probably still that way up until I quit smoking, <laughs> uh, yeah. quite frankly. Um, which thank god I finally got that monkey off my back. Oh. Uh, that must uh have it's been, been tough. Several, you were a serious uh, you know. I was, yeah. By the time I quit, I was smoking two packs of American Spirits a day. Okay, that yeah. is a lot of fucking smoke. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I used, uh, I started using vaporizers. Yep. Um, which turns out probably aren't that great at all, but um, it did help. I actually used it for its intended purpose to like wean myself down on nicotine. Okay. Because I needed that hand to mouth, and eventually one day I was just like okay that's over and it's over so yeah i I don't even smoke i honestly i have weed but i don't even smoke weed uh anymore i eat edibles and things like that which i'm sure you guys out there you guys are like on every corner out here yeah i was gonna say (laughs) it's like mcdonald's (laughs) totally there's more than there's more of them there's way more dispensaries in boulder than mcdonald's i can tell you that (laughs) (laughs) way way more yeah (laughs) it's like it's like a it's like the opposite of baltimore instead of like uh instead of like church liquor store bail bonds it's like (laughs) dispensary vegan restaurant yoga studio (laughs) yoga studio (laughs) microbrewery totally (laughs) yeah <laughs> yep. so, Subaru dealership, Birkin's yeah. store. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and that's every block. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Every now and every now and again, uh, we throw like a drug rug store in for good measure, but <laughs> we like to keep it all kind of going uh, in the same flavor. <laughs> yeah, you and I hammered hard on the psychedelics for a while there. Like yes. I, I remember, I mean, we all kind of did, but then I remember specifically you and I just being like, well, it's Tuesday. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> exactly. Then the next night, it's Wednesday. Why it wouldn't Wednesday. we? <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't we? Yeah, exactly. No, dude. Uh, that was in, see, I started doing, uh, I started doing the psychedelics like before I moved to Wisconsin. Right. So I, I had been doing them probably, I think I started doing them when I was probably 15. Mm. Sorry, mom. Um, but uh, <laughs> I was probably doing it. I was probably doing it when I was like 15, uh, taking acid uh, in particular, because it was such a hot thing down in Tennessee. Um, and so I started taking it down there. And then when I moved up here, uh, I was like, shit, I got to find somebody who, then get acid from (laughs) because i like taking acid yeah and so i found i found a couple of dudes at school in my first couple of weeks there um that were like yeah like we know a guy where you can get some acid like if you want some acid like we'll come pick you up this weekend and we can go get it Mm -hmm. and if you've got time, this is a wild fucking story right here. <laughs> I've got a uh, lot of wild acid stories, man. Believe me. <laughs> so these two dudes are the first two people that I meet at Milton High School, really, that I'm like talking to and stuff like that. And they're just like normal fucking like regular dudes from what I think. Just like, you know, two fucking farm kids, like white kids out in the middle of the rural nowhere. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, and I told my mom, I came home on Friday. I'm like, look, I may, I think I made some friends. Like if it's cool, I'm going to go out with them on Friday and we're just going to go into Milton to this other friend's house and chill out for a little while. 
because I was going to get it and come back home. I didn't know these fucking people and I wasn't about to trip around them. Mm -hmm. Um, And so anyway, they come pick me up and they're like, yeah, you're really going to like our friend. And I was like, okay, cool. And so I was like, we're driving into town. It's kind of the same route that I go to school. And so anyway, I'm like coming into town, whatever. And like, we're pulling up in the driveway and they're like, all right, like watch out. He's got a couple of real big dogs. You know, it's like Rottweilers or something. I was like, fuck, I want to fuck with them. (laughs) And so anyway, they're barking. They're like, we'll just let him, he'll pull him back. And so we're going up and they're like, well, just be cool. I was like, be cool. Like what, what's up? I'm like, well, just be cool. He's kind of an older dude. And I was like, okay, cool. I was like, that's fine. I dealt with older dudes down in Tennessee. And um, anyway, we get up to the door and go in. And uh, I was like, well, this is weird because this dude's in there with like this high and tight fucking haircut. Like real militant looking. And I was like, well, this is a strange fucking a situation. Yeah. A little sketchy. Uh, <laughs> you know, this guy looks like a cop or like <laughs> he's in the army or something. He's like not this dude that I should be buying acid from. <laughs> so anyway, they're like, you're and like they had been telling me the whole time just how much I'm gonna like this guy. One of them actually put this one statement into the whole thing. They're like, well you're from the South. And I was like, yeah okay (laughs) so anyway we get inside this dude's house and like he's nice enough at least to my face and like shakes my hand welcomes me to his home um says hi to these guys he obviously knows them and uh anyway he's like all right well you know we'll go down to the basement you know we're going down there he's like i got a finished basement pool table the whole deal cool you know i'm teenager i'm like fuck yeah like pool table big screen tv all this shit whatever get down there and as i'm walking down this like wainscoted fucking hallway into the basement where there's just nothing but wainscoting everywhere i see the pool table the big screen tv stereo system and all these weird white supremacist flags all (laughs) over the fucking wall (laughs) oh boy now I'm the blondest, most (laughs) blue green eyed, whitest kid like ever, you know, (laughs) when I had hair, it was white and, um, when it wasn't blue, it was white. And so anyway, I'm like, Oh shit. (laughs) Like what the, and I'm like looking at these dudes and they're just like smiling. They're like, fine. So he's like, you, you guys have a beer. And I was like, all right, yeah, I guess I can have a beer. Yeah. And so I was like, have this beer. And I'm like sipping quick, and like looking around. He's like, so you wanted some acid? And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, he's like, I'll tell you what. He's like, I can get a couple of hits for you. I got them here. Um, would you be interested in some literature? Oh, no. And I, I was like, <laughs> yeah. You know, I was like, you know, probably just the acid. Like, probably, be, you know. <laughs> like i don't know like i just got here you know i just moved here like i don't know about literature and like anyway i like am backpedaling like crazy and this guy is like not saying what he's into but is like keeps talking about his organization and how they're looking for people that look like me to be in their organization <laughs> <laughs> and so i'm like you know like here's my $20 if I could just get the, those tabs, yeah, yeah. you know? So, like, I get these fucking things and I was like, throw my elbow into these dudes. I'm like, we gotta go. Gotta like, go. I think I'm, yeah. my mom, like, I can't be out so long. <laughs> like, you know, like, she's gonna be unhappy. Like, I told her, I was just like, just test run. I haven't been here that long. I don't know you guys so well. We should go. And so, like, I thanked him for the beer, hospitality, and everything like that. And we're driving home, and they're like, so what do you think? Like, you want to come back and hang out sometime? I was like, no, nah, I don't think I'm good. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, they're like, you know who that was, right? And I was like, no, I don't have any idea who that was. But I'm like, I should probably just go home. Turns out it was that dude that, like, threw the chair and broke Geraldo's nose. Oh, yeah. At the hotel in Janesville. Right, right. I'm trying to remember what that guy's name was. It was Ken, him. yeah, it was Ken something. Was it Ken and Peterson so, or something like that? Yeah. yeah. He's re- he's apparently reformed now. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> he's like reformed and like I forgot what he's doing, some kind of like not for profit charity, I think, from uh some shit I saw on like Google or something. But wow. Yeah. 
So this fucking guy was the guy <laughs> I got this fucking acid from. And it's like my first 10 days in Wisconsin. And I was just like, I was at home and I was like in my room, just kind of chilling out, like rocking back and forth a little thing. Like, Man, what the fuck is up here? Right. Like, I, I don't know what is going on in Wisconsin. But like, that was some wild shit. And my mom was like, oh, you're home really early. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> just going to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, just going to bed. Like, <laughs> I think I actually dropped one of the doses and just, like, sat up all night painting or something like that. But I was just like, I had to get my mind, like, in a whole different space because totally. I was like, man, that was fucking wild so, <laughs> so yeah oh, so God. yeah dabbling and so yeah we had some real weird times dabbling in psychedelics and shit like that and oh, probably yeah. like uh one thing that i have learned since i started taking them later in life again uh is that we were definitely just taking too much yeah. <laughs> just to, just to see how far you could go oh and just like you know <laughs> partying too you know i mean yeah you know oh, yeah. Wrong, wrong set and setting you know drinking just shit loads while we were doing it you know yeah i mean totally. nowadays it, it's used it can be used like therapeutically you can go to a, yeah. a, a doctor at places outside of boulder and you know they'll sit you down and they'll give you ketamine or different types of mushrooms and stuff and they'll put a blindfold on you and they'll sit there and talk to you and bring up old memories sure. and you know, it's like, yeah, we were just like, ah, garbage kid. Like, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> what? What do you got? <laughs> Let's throw it in the mix. Yep. So, yeah, that was the one thing. Like, I started real slowly and trepidatious back into uh, doing it, but uh, I knew there was something I was kind of missing. Yeah. Um, and I started microdosing myself. Oh yeah. So I'd chop up a full hit of acid and i'll take you know however many corners of it that uh at the time i can mentally deal with and like just with surroundings and stuff mm -hmm. like that like what i can handle but i'm not out in public or anything i'm always at home and uh um yeah man like i just found that like um after shit gets real heavy and like has been kind of just fucked up for too long and like a little too negative and things like that like uh, taking one of those, like, not completely blown out your ass hits like <laughs> we used to do, <laughs> but, like, doing it probably in a very, like, almost clinical way like you're talking about, yeah. um, it really kind of just wipes the slate clean for totally, me at this point, yeah. and yeah. I'm more, I'm happier, I'm more creative, mm. um, I don't have, like, um, I think it's, like, the serotonin or whatever that it, like, depletes, uh, mm. that, like, MDMA uh, deplete, but, like, um, I don't have that drop off, like that mental drop off afterwards because you're not on such a high dose. Yeah. And so it's actually really helpful. Um, same thing with like the, uh, the THC edibles and stuff like that. And even yeah. tinctures and stuff like that. It's like, it's just, now it's just medicine and it's a tool, you know, totally. it's not, you know, you're not, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to break on through to any side because I've got, I've, I've been there. <laughs> been there. Oh yeah. my God. We've been there on like, Tuesday night. Wednesday. The, yeah. Wednesday night. Thursday. What are you Thursday. doing? Thursday. <laughs> we're taking three let's take a ride in the volvo <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah it was like either the volvo or like your red shadow that you had god shadow yeah let's yep. go listen uh -huh. to mr bungle and trip all night in the woods <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> great idea. what time what time you gotta work tomorrow <laughs> seven <laughs> yeah cool i can make it <laughs> yeah it's only 11 i know we're good to go <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my god i'll probably oh. be up in time for breakfast <laughs> but yeah that's oh. the that's the thing like now uh i don't know i mean uh now it's just like like i said it's very it's not i mean the experience itself is not clinical or anything like that but it definitely like the dosing and stuff like that definitely is but uh, I agree with the, like, when they started, I, I almost tattooed a doctor that's working on psychedelic research here in Madison, uh, for a company, um, that that's what they do. It's all psychedelic research. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I had a really interesting conversation with him. I didn't wind up tattooing him 
just because we just kind of didn't see eye to eye on things. Um, but uh, I explained to him just how much, how much psychedelic, you know, how much psychedelic traveling I had done and yeah. like some of the things that had happened. And um, <laughs> I wound up kind of spooking him because he, uh, <laughs> he, he had, he and his wife had been doing it at home uh, because he wanted, he wanted to test this stuff just like, you know, the sure. people he was having take it and stuff like that. And I was like, I get it. You know, I totally understand it, but she wound up having, um, a terrible, terrible trip on mushrooms, mm. uh, which so did I. Mm. Um, I think that was the one where I was trying to talk you guys into taking me to Mercy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> remember that crazy fucking dude that came to your house uh, and he was like traveling through from Minneapolis and had like these wild ass mushrooms oh, with yeah. him? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was the trip, oh, and really? like, yeah. yeah, I lost my fucking shit. And I remember <laughs> trying to talk people into driving me to Mercy oh. so I could be shot up with Thorazine. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, and so I was talking to him about like he was telling me he's like he's like man, do you know much about mushrooms? And I was like, I know too much about mushrooms. What do you want to <laughs> fucking know? He's like, so my wife and I took these mushrooms and she had a really adverse reaction and a real bad trip and she's kind of weird now and i was like yep that's i was possible. like <laughs> i was like that's totally that's in the wheelhouse for oh, sure yeah. <laughs> and he was like he's, i was like i had that happen i was like uh, my shit was like scrambled for like a good six months <laughs> i was like it kind of is one of the things that got me out of fucking around with that stuff and uh he was like what six months and i was like yeah dude i was like <laughs> i'm talking like in the pan scrambling like straight up i'm like i've never wanted somebody to hit me with thorazine so hard in my life yeah and he was like how did you get through it and i'm like i dealt with six months of bullshit then <laughs> 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 you go back to it I'm like i just figure shrooms aren't my thing uh so um but yeah, he was like, even as a researcher, he was pretty like blown away that like that kind of stuff, you know, that it would take that kind of time. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm like some of that fucking, I'm like, at least with acid, you know, kind of like for, to a certain extent, as much as you can know, you kind of know where you're going. Yeah. Um, if you but take one, you kind of know how heavy it's going to be. Exactly. Then, exactly. But, yeah. Mushrooms is kind of a crapshoot, especially yeah, the way we were doing it. You right, know, it's yeah. like, okay, here's a bag from who knows who. <laughs> You take this much. I'll take this much. <laughs> these are per these are purple and white. Should we have half a bag each? Yeah, yeah okay. for sure. Yeah. Let's, let's go to the astral planes, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who's going to get Taco Bell for us to eat these oh, on? God. You know, <laughs> oh, we God. did that that night. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was like, man, I was like, dude, I'm like, I wound up, I walked in, I'd been out wandering around. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but I've been out wandering around. I, I forgot who was, but I was wandering around the block because some people did actually notice that I was kind of losing it. And um, they took me out walking around the block and we came back, went into the house because I needed to use the bathroom at your place. and Or I thought I did. Like for some reason, like taking that many mushrooms makes you think you constantly have to piss. Right. Um, so anyway, I'm like, fuck, I gotta piss like everywhere all the time. And so we go inside, all the lights are off except for the television. And you guys, a bunch of you guys are sitting on the couches that like wrap around the whole room. Uh -huh. And on the TV is natural born killers playing <laughs> and it's during the shaman snake scene. Oh, <laughs> it's like a creepiest <laughs> scene. <laughs> yeah. And so I go upstairs and immediately catch myself dead in the fucking pupils in the mirror yeah. in the bathroom, which is <laughs> not good. No, like, no, it's bad, bad. <laughs> and so, and then I'm like, Oh shit. Am I okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I feel sick. So I threw up in the toilet. And instead of seeing what I know is Taco Bell and mushrooms, it's snakeskin. Oh, 
<laughs> and all I can hear are those rattlesnakes. <laughs> and so it's like rattlesnakes in my ears and snakeskin pouring out of my body. Damn. And I like got everything out and I was just like kind of heaving for a minute and like eyes are water and shit. And I leaned back against the tub and sat there. And then all I could see in the toilet was snakeskin. And that's when like I like I washed my hands, came downstairs and like out the back door. Like you guys even said something to me. You were like, hey. And I was just like zip like, right out the back door. And I went out there and like uh I forget who it was that was out there. Maybe it was Cam Toon. Uh, but he's like, you need a cigarette and you need to sit down. And I was just like, ah, there's a lot I need. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, but that was the one, like, people to this day will be like, you want, yeah, I know some, it's got some shrooms. I'm like, well, they can keep those. Uh, <laughs> it's all the same. They can just keep that. <laughs> I've cool. been there. I've done it. <laughs> yeah. No thanks. It's good. <laughs> Uh, all set <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah that was a definitely like that was like that was really a wild period of time and like all of our lives i think oh, for like, sure for sure it was like those early like late teens early 20s like just renegade you know that's like and if you were gonna i mean I don't know. I mean, a lot of people now would probably be like, wow, you guys were a bunch of fuck ups, but I don't know, man. I think we lived pretty well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> considering. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Totally. I mean, I think, it, I think it actually, I mean, I know for me, uh, it, it probably, it worked out, I think in the long run for the better, yeah, uh, a lot yeah. of, you know, a lot of ways. So totally, um, I, I don't regret it. <laughs> no, I don't regret a thing, man. I had a blast. Are you kidding me? I, I don't a, regret anything. I, yeah, I had a no. great time. Dude, it was we fantastic. Had, so. We had a lot of fun, man, especially in that place on Oak Hill. I mean, I yeah. remember one time uh, we were all out of weed and we decided if we search this house enough, there's got to be some here somewhere. And we looked yeah. all over the place, man. We dug everywhere. We couldn't find any. And finally, you're like, fuck it. I'm going home. And uh, so you took off and we kept on looking. And sure enough, we found a bag. It was like burying the couch <laughs> in the basement. And we called you up. You you'd went all the way home to Milton. We called yeah. you up. Like, dude, we found some. You're like, God damn it. I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> dude man back then during those dry times like you know it was like and not to mention the fact that like for the most part we were getting just like dirt oh yeah you know like it was garbage like, swag whatever we yeah brick, brick weed yeah. you know oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like oh you know like i mean i would go to this there was this one fucking like this guy's probably still cooking in a country kitchen somewhere. Um, but his name was Bill, and he was like, he was this weird, wild dude um, that just like dealt weed and smoked weed. Um, and I cooked with him at Country Kitchen when I worked there. And uh, he found out that I liked weed. Who knew a 16 or 17 year old would like <laughs> right? weed, but uh, I did. And so I thought Bill was like a weirdo because Bill had like bangs that were like cut straight across his forehead, <laughs> but had like a mullet down to the middle of his back. And he wore like the craziest, like giant transitions glasses <laughs> that you've ever seen. <laughs> and like Bill. Uh, Sounds like your standard pot dealer in Wisconsin. <laughs> <those days. laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And his side gig was like cooking breakfast over at Country yep. Kitchen, yep. you know, and dinner sometimes with me. But like, so I got to talking to this guy and he's like, man, just can you come over, you know, like come over, stop by my place. I'm right on, um, was it Milton Avenue? Like he was in one of those big Victorians, like renting like a spot in there. And so I was like, all right, cool. And I was like, I'm going to get an ounce and he was like yeah fuck yeah he's like ounce 150 and i was like shit really and it's <laughs> like you know it's like seeds and stems you yeah. know <laughs> <laughs> like it's so dry yeah. and just seeds and stems but uh anyway i was stoked to have it and so i go to this dude's house and uh <laughs> i go in and he's got this giant fucking television 
that is like one of the really old school like projection style TVs. And then his furniture consists of lawn chairs and like a lawn table that <laughs> You, you can there's like nothing else perfect and he yeah he, <laughs> like, he's just sitting in there and it's fucking like he's sitting there in his shorts no shirt on because there's no air conditioning and it's summer and he's like mullets like just flapping in the fucking fan breeze <laughs> and his transitions are like going off because of the television so they're all like you know adjusted to sunglasses and so uh, I go over there to get my ounce and like homeboys like breaking it out. And I was just like, man, I'm like this is like a fucking hovel. Like this is rough. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> and like, I mean, technically he has everything he needs, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, a bunch of weed in the lawn chair. Yeah, he's good to exactly. Go. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like he's living the dream realistically. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but anyway, he's like, Oh, he's like, He's like, if it's okay, he's like, my girl is stopping by, you know, she's going to like have lunch or whatever. She's on a break from her job. And so yeah, I was like, well, thanks for warning me. You know, like I want to be freaked out when I'm getting an ounce of weed because I think I'm doing big shit, you know, at this right. point. <laughs> and uh, anyway, like she comes rolling in and I was just like, my jaw dropped because I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, she this is a beautiful woman like a beautiful young woman that is like here and i'm like she's in the wrong fucking house yo like, somebody better tell her and like she walks over and like she gives him a kiss on the forehead and it's like oh it's like this your friend from work or whatever he's like yeah this is so and so like he's breaking out my bag and she's like oh yeah i just came by to eat my lunch and blah 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 and i was just like looking at this guy and i'm just like i guess he really is living the dream <laughs> like, like straight up like this guy is like for fucking real doing it like she's interested in this guy that has a lawn chair for furniture wow. a giant television and a bunch of stinky weed i was like <laughs> Awesome. Well, who am I to judge? <laughs> it's good Wisconsin living right there, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, dude. There you go. Uh, we had some good times, man. Yeah, we had no some doubt. Great times. Yeah. Absolutely. Gosh. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. <laughs> but, you know, when I think about it, like, I would totally do it again, but I don't think I could do it again. <laughs> like, I don't know that, like, the laws of physics and just, like, the universe would allow it to all happen yeah that right, right right you know it's like we got lucky to live through it once <laughs> you don't get right. lucky to live through that thing again man no. we we went hard in the paint many, everybody many got nights. everybody got a hall pass and yeah. it was like okay this is just the perfect time for all this to be going on and happening yeah. because yeah. i don't think that i don't think that most of that's possible today uh no. No. like not at all and especially just being that disconnected from um social media from phones email all that shit like mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. you know like no i don't know if anybody back then heard the term helicopter parent i don't think so you know no. <laughs> like, no. uh -uh. <laughs> your parent if your parents were like around and you were at home on the weekend they'd be like why the fuck are you here right, right. <laughs> you should go out and do something <laughs> like, you should go uh, visit your friends uh, uh. no i know <laughs> like, okay I'm looking through these pictures earlier today and i found this beautiful picture of you and i oh yep there we go <laughs> look at that and you know uh you got a Milwaukee's beast in your hand and we're just at the Seven Eleven apartment with just like blacked out windows all the time, living next door to the Unabomber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> living next door to the Unabomber and looking for the Tauntaun. You, totally. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God. We were on Tauntaun watch like oh, all the time. All the time. Like, oh, did man. you see him? I yeah. saw him. Like, well, there was one night that I, we like we were tripping and we were out walking. You encountered around. him. Right? Yeah, we ended up finding him and we were trying to talk to him and he was more spaced out than we were. I mean, he was <laughs> yeah. out there. We'd try and talk to yeah. him and he'd start talking about synthesizing methylated alkylators and just all this. Weird. It's like, dude, what do you? <laughs> and we tried getting him to come back to the house for a beer and we couldn't do it, man. And we came back. Really yeah. 
Guess who we talked to? <laughs> I know <laughs> our hero, but Tom Tom. Yeah, I was like. I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> all the fucking nights that I couldn't be around. <laughs> like, the to, put it into, to put it into context for anybody listening, the, the we call them the Tauntaun because we all had Star Wars nicknames of some sort. So we decided to call this guy the Tauntaun. And uh, he was... Uh, <sighs> I, I don't even know how to describe him. Uh, a transvestite, homeless. Uh, com- at one time, I think that he had just lost his mind on psychedelics or some acid or yeah. something. And he would just. I kind of wonder if he lived in a group home. Maybe. Yeah. I like, don't know. because he always like, I mean, that's, I mean, that was one of the reasons, one of the reasons that we, we named him the Tauntaun was because he was like, high stepping in that super fucking fluffy white coat yeah that's right he'd wear like high heels and a skirt and he'd, he'd walk yeah around and he, he was so tripped out man you're yeah. right i mean he probably wasn't homeless because he was as weird as he was he was sort of well kept like the way yeah. dressed up like yeah. a woman and uh yeah totally yeah I, I, heard, I heard that he died i don't know if it's true uh, i think he just kind of disappeared so he must have because he was always walking around town but, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that guy, I mean, you would see that guy like I mean, you know the hours that we kept back then <laughs> and like I mean, so, I remember us going to breakfast at like Country Kitchen and Perkins and stuff like that sometimes at like 3 4 in the morning. Yeah. And sometimes you'd go through downtown Janesville and this guy would be like high stepping it like <laughs> across the, like one of the bridges or something like that and like marching back and forth and yeah. like talking to himself and he'd just be like dude like, I want what he has <laughs> yeah you know, whatever he's like where can we get that <laughs> like, we haven't trashed everything enough yet oh we need that <laughs> so uh so yeah and then like living when you guys were living next to the unabomber like did <laughs> did anybody ever see him like full on never never ne- never not one time no. we lived there for years and yeah. he, he was like the uh, neighbor in the home improvement show that you would just see him peeking over the corner of the fence and you just see his eyes. You would never yeah. see this guy. We never talked to him. Um, yeah. You know, it, it was so bizarre, man. And uh, yeah, he lived next door and, the, and there was that one night we were partying down in the basement drinking and uh, there was that sock and there was a little hole in the basement between the two uh, apartments. It was a duplex and there was a sock stuffed in this little hole. And we were down there one night and all of a sudden the sock disappeared. And we all, yeah. we're like, oh, the Unabomber. He, yeah. He's listening. He's watching us, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, I was like, I, you know, I was like, it was all, we always, at least from my memory, uh, we always missed seeing him come or go yeah. by like basically the length of like a trench coat. Yeah. Like the tail of a trench coat. It was yep. like, you would just see this like beige, dark fabric. See him just walking away. Yeah. It was like, yeah. And he was gone. Yeah. Like I was yeah. just like, honestly, like that guy, like I still think about that. Like on a kind of like, man, I'm like that fucking guy, like talk about disappearing in plain sight. And he never like, called the cops on us. Dude, we yeah, that music so loud all night, every night. He never called the cops on us once. I mean, nope, never called the police. <laughs> like, ne- I don't know. I don't remember him ever even like banging on a wall. Never, uh-uh. never. Like, <laughs> just like I was like, I don't like. I, I was like thinking about it once. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like I wonder if we were like. I think we talked about this too. Like, we wondered at one point if we were some part of an experiment right like you know where it's like oh maybe this place is like wired up you know like Like, we don't ultra experiment yeah (laughs) (laughs) it could have been man who knows yeah like i mean you couldn't have picked a bunch of better test subjects for it totally Um, because like what do you want to do everything everything yeah (laughs) we're in a dumpy apartment where the bathtub's (laughs) coming through into the kitchen (laughs) into the kitchen (laughs) right you know every time you took a shower Power up there would leak down to the kitchen and we had a big garbage yeah. barrel collecting water we'd have to dump that out every couple of days <laughs> <laughs> only the finest oh dude <laughs> oh my god only the finest uh, yeah that was uh 
Uh, I mean, that was a good, that was a, that was an excellent, I mean, as dumpy as that was and uh, as wild and weird as everything and everybody was like, that was like, still has the best, it was you know, perfect. It was perfect. <laughs> like everybody, everybody's like, this is great. I know, <laughs> man. <laughs> whereas like, whereas like now I can't go camping, you know, right. it's like, <laughs> if I go to a chair, yeah, I was like, fuck all that, man, yeah, right. like <laughs> shit on the ground, like, there, where's the Hilton? Right. Like, right. <laughs> like that's, that's the whole deal. Like, and I'm serious. I'm a bitch that way, like straight up, like, um, you know, if I go to a tattoo convention now, I'll be able to be like, ah, oh, dude, like, like four or five of us can totally get a fucking big ass hotel room, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, 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 <laughs> like, nah, Holmes, like I'm renting my own booth for right. the fucking show and right. I'm working in it by myself. Like we can take down the barriers and like, you can get booths next to me and I'm getting my own room. Yeah. Cause like, <laughs> uh, uh-uh. uh. No, nah, I'm done fucking around with this. Done like, with all that. We've been there, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm not like, I'm not drawing straws to see who shit first in the morning. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't want to sleep in a room with a bunch of like other dirty tattooers for, right. you know, a weekend and like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Dude, I wish you'd have do, come out here to a convention or something. I wish I lived closer to you, man. I'd love to get some more work done, but uh, yeah, yeah. Man. Well, there's actually one of my uh, one of my buddies uh, that tat- well, he was tattooing here, um, but he just he and his uh, girlfriend just moved are moving tomorrow to Colorado, mm-hmm. and I think he's going to be living either in Boulder or Denver. Oh, sweet. Like in that area. Cool. Um, and so uh, I guess she she's in the medical field and bought a house out there. Oh, cool. Um, so uh, there's a good chance that you will be, as soon as we can travel yeah. again, yeah. I'll come out. Dude, so <laughs> be awesome. Be awesome, man. I'd love to I'll, chop I'll, it up I'll, with I'll you. T- and... <laughs> yeah, I'll tattoo you in the kitchen. Absolutely. <laughs> <Do> it, <laughs> Perfect. Do Perfect. I do that. I do that. <laughs> uh, I do that to a, one of my friends that lives in Austin. Uh, I, uh, I actually have gone down and like, he's had me down a few times, like during his birthday and stuff. And like, I just take over the dining room, this queen, the floor, make it look like Dexter's about to get started on something. <laughs> and like, I'll just tattoo him right there. Uh, nice. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. As long as you're doing it safe. Yeah. Proper. Yeah. Cool. So Dude. yeah. We could if do you that. come out this way, please like let me know for sure. I'd be down. I, yeah, it's weird. I, I can probably even... go. I can, I can probably go for a walk with you on a small mountain. Yeah, <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. I, I was listening to one of the last one of the uh, one of the last casts that you did with uh, uh, with the. I think it was the guy that was like into really into keto that you oh, were yeah, talking yeah. about. Yep. Yeah, and yep. I was just Runs like two hundred milers. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, this is incredible. I listened to that while I was building a tattoo machine. Nice. And I was just like, I was like, man, this is incredibly interesting. And this guy has far more testicular fortitude than <laughs> I ever will. Uh, this sounds incredible and yeah. insane. I was like, I can see the parallels with it, like between like kind of my life and like that life yeah uh because they do run very it's just two different balls of wax really totally um, but uh i was like man i'm like i just like i don't know about this <laughs> <laughs> but like it's i'm like when i thought about it i was like you know like it's just a different thing probably to get you to the other side that's uh, exactly it. I mean, it, yeah. that's exactly it. I mean, you know me, you knew me before and you know yep. me now. And uh, yeah, that's exactly it, man. I mean, you can go out and run a hundred miler. I mean, or say a 24 hour event, you're up all night long and it's just like a psychedelic adventure, man. You live, oh, yeah. <laughs> you live like five lifetimes in this 24 hour period. Your emotions are up and down and you hate running and you love running and just right. everything in between. And yeah, it's exactly the same thing, man. It's very, uh, very similar. The physical and mental exhaustion that uh, I have uh, heard about just in the ver- like in the very short time that I started like listening to these podcasts, I'm just like, 
like I like I feel like I did something after. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa. I'm like, you get a nap after listening. Like, yeah. It's like <laughs> I was like, this is a lot. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I should probably go sit on the couch and watch a movie. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about this. No, uh, that no, guy's no, no. tremendous, man. That guy runs uh he uh, he did uh three two hundred mile races in a two and a half month time span. So hardly any time to recover. And he's winning all these races, you know. It's just incredible. And he did it twice. He won both yeah. times. You know, it's well, I, I very much enjoyed the fact that he had like like on everything almost that he said in regards to training and everything. He had a disclaimer that was like, now this is not what I do. Yeah. But, yeah. But, this is not what I would recommend. This is not what right. I tell people to do. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like nothing I'm doing is like in any way orthodox. Yeah but I'll tell you about it, <laughs> you know? Totally, totally. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. I'm like, at least he's like talking about the fact that like, he's, you know, he's like, basically like, I'm a madman. Yeah, and totally. sometimes you just got to be that way if you're going to do this. Yep. So <laughs> yep. dude's a and renegade. I, I love yeah, I get, those I, people. Yeah, I love the I stories. Get it. Yeah, man. It's all good stuff. Dude. It's so wild. Like, I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, you could sum up a lot of my really like, uh, hardcore like endurance like fitness type things and sloppy second songs but like, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna eat up but all like, your food but, and steal your beer <laughs> right yeah exactly but it's like you guys are on a whole different level and i've got a lot of respect for it because i'm like man there is like no like i'm like ah, you know i might go and learn how to tig weld instead you know <laughs> 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 I don't know, like, but the problem I think with me is also the fact that, like, I re I didn't realize this when I was a kid, but like, because I'm a tall dude and I've always been a pretty big dude, like, um, I basically like destroyed my knees and my ankles skateboarding uh, as a teenager, uh, and so now, like, especially with like the tattooing lifestyle and stuff like that, and just like aging yeah. it's like dude it feels like my knees just want to like leave me and mm -hmm. new ones need to be there <laughs> <So>. <laughs> just get like, some new yeah. knees dude i'll sign you up for a 200 mile yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean I'll, uh, I'll tell you what i'll buy a gopro <laughs> i'll buy a go you're the smarter one I'll, of the two of us, for sure. You're I'll, like, nah, I'll, buy I'll video a, it. I'll buy a GoPro. You wear it. <laughs> and I'll get an earpiece. <laughs> I'll just be like, yo, man, we're back here at the spot at the end. Like, what's going on now? <laughs> you can watch a video of us puking out in the woods. <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm about to drone you in some fresh sneakers. Like, shit's going to be awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of waiting for that to become a thing for you guys too, where it's like there's like drones coming in and bringing you like fresh shoes and oh, taking your old yeah. ones away. Yeah. Like uh, just because of the way technology is going at this point, it's you not know. A bad idea. Maybe I should It's look not at all. Yeah. yeah. Business. Hell yeah. That's right there. That's it That's right part, there. Part of your part of your crewing thing. We will you drone know? you in some shoes and some food. Yeah, we'll yeah drone exactly. you in a puke bucket and then <laughs> pick it up and drone it back yeah. <laughs> uh, so you got a, you got your you got your on the go latrine yeah your shoes uh, and uh like some packets of like whatever the goo is you were talking goos, about yeah, on there. For yeah sure. the goos and like, <laughs> you know an apple or some shit and yes. then, yeah there you go dude like, i'm gonna have to i'm gonna owe you a royalty check now when i make yeah. that happen <laughs> <laughs> you can buy me a beer too right on. <laughs> cool. oh dude this has been so, awesome dude, man I yeah absolutely you, man. this has been a blast we should do this like a couple times a year and we could just yeah sit here for and, sure i mean we can talk old stories forever dude we can oh, sit yeah. here and go on all night long like we barely yeah. even tip the touch of the iceberg yeah, this is just a scratch on that surface. Totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been awesome, man. You're a badass tattoo artist and just you're an artist all together, man. I mean, you're, well, I you're doing tattoos. It. Now you're making these machines and it's just 
it's uh, been awesome just watching your journey and uh, I love it, man. So just well, it's been awesome you. watching yours. This dude, some of the stuff that you do out there and that fucking running <laughs> and like climbing mountains and like your book with the 14ers and yeah. like stuff like that, dude. I'm just like fucking blown away with it. Yeah. Like it's like I said, it's not something that I even think that I'm remotely capable of doing uh, at this point. Uh, but uh, it is in, I love seeing other people's, uh, I love seeing the journeys of other people yeah. uh, because like, I mean, we're all on our own, you yeah. know, we're all on our, we're all on our own trip. And so it's just really cool to like have a connection with somebody uh, that you've known for so long yeah. uh, and see them thriving and doing really cool shit. Uh, totally. And so uh, I appreciate you having me. And Absolutely. as always, it's fantastic to see and talk to you. Dude, who would have thought that we would have ended up here? Like back when we were hanging out, who like never in a million years would I have dreamed never. best life for me or for you, you know? Nope. Never. Mm -hmm. You never know, all. man. You just never you don't know. know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Like I said, uh, it's like one day it was like, do you really want to do this? <laughs> yeah. Know? It's like, yeah. I just I think tried I to take a walk. I think I do. And yeah. like, then you just do it. So, yeah. 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 Dude. <laughs> So cool, man. Well, listen, this yeah, has been absolutely. awesome, man. We've been almost almost three hours now, man. I love it. This is one of my longest ones ever. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody's going for a hey. really long run, they're gonna have a good yeah. podcast to listen to. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do anything that I talked about if yeah, you're out right? running. <laughs> Hopefully the statue of limitations is long gone on all the stuff we just talked about. <laughs> Fingers across. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you so Excellent. much. I Thank you very it. much, Adam. Yeah, I, I can't wait it. to do this again. And if you come out this way, definitely let me know. Absolutely. You guys all, right. all take care. For Thanks sure. for listening. I appreciate it. All right. Take care, brother. Have a good one. Yep. Yes. Bye-bye. Right. We'll see you.